Hello, happy Halloween and welcome to Rump Mance, your TV. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, that was I gotta brand. commit to that horror movie scream. <laughs> Ah. The Can't screaming is a little bit different than the kind we're used to. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it took you a second. I did. I don't know what sound it just made. <laughs> a good one. But yes. Yeah, it was a Halloween spooky sound. That's what it was. Gosh. The day is finally upon us. Thank the Lord Pumpkin. <laughs> Lord I just... Sawin? I can never say that. The who and the huh? Sawin? Sawin? You know, saw like the old name for Halloween. Sawin? Sawin? I have never heard that. Okay, well, it's 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 spelled like Samhain, and it throws me every time, but I think it's Sawin. Or Sawin. I'm so sorry to anyone listening who's like, oh my god, this is painful to hear. You mispronounce it so badly. I mispronounce it every time. And then I misspell it every time because I think to myself, Sawin, and it's Sam Hain. What is this date back to? Look, I don't know. I just, I'm just I recording. Even... I mean, I, I know like All Hallows it's Eve. It's a Gaelic festival on oh. the 1st of November, marking the end of the harvest season and beginning of the winter or darker half of the year. Huh. Marked what? the Celtic New Year. On this day, the Celts believed the veil between the living and the dead was especially thin. Mmm. Come at me, horny ghosts. It is time. Yeah, Please. bring on the horny ghosts. <laughs> Please. The horny ghosts, the vampires, who we know are horny because that's, Why like, inherent yeah. to being a vampire. You mm -hmm. don't even have to say it. It's understood. Bloodlust. Um, and lust. <laughs> the witches. The, just the werewolves. The witches. The, yeah. They are the, they are all present. the monsters. We are here for Do the, the monster, monster mash. mash. Do the mash. Do the graveyard smash. The monster mash. Well, that's, that's how we it. get around. That's how we get around the, copyrighted music. We just sing it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love a DIY moment. I put a spell on you. In the tune of Monster Mash. <laughs> I'm mashing all the all the borders Listen, and the veils tonight. You're mashing all the ba the veils. Yeah. Uh, my brain is fried. Nah, same. Uh, Sao Sao Hain. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I have no zombies on here. Has I... anyone written a zombie romance? I have to assume so, but I don't have any zombies either. That's a bummer. Um, I can't say I'm like. That I, sad I'm about just it? like curious how it would work. You know what I mean? Uh, like I'd yeah. love to see somebody pull it off. Yeah, I bet. I mean, that's a good point. Or mummies. Yeah, no mummies. Mm -mm. I just want somebody to attempt it. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure I someone agree. has, but like someone that can actually <laughs> write, please. That would. There were several nice novellas that I started, and within, like, a page, I was like, you know what? There's, like, bad but in a fun way, <laughs> and then there's just, like, bad. actually atrociously written to the point where yeah. I can't continue reading this. And unfortunately, as several, I quit before I had even really gotten started. It was tragic. It made the ones that I was able to get through seem yeah. like, oh, wow, you know what? Maybe that one wasn't <laughs> that bad. Sounds kind of scary. Uh, it was a little spooky. Uh, a little scary, a little a little skeleton. I, uh, <laughs> Doesn't deserve I mean, it to was be in the kind same of, breath. Yeah, well, I just realized I left one off of my list. How I, dare you? I know. I'm having a day. No, Me I didn't. Too. It made it on there. I'm good. Everything's great. Lando Norris finished P5, by the way. What is for P5? those of you who the fifth place just be okay i was like i don't know what the p like the p is the place Pee -wee. <laughs> i know gotcha. everybody was so desperate to know um even though they were desperate to know but they didn't watch the race um you know how things work uh mm -hmm. so for those of you that are just dying to know how lando did at the mexican grand prix he i'm dying to know nice uh <laughs> so aggressive um nice nice 
Um, I believe you're still bejeweled. Exactly. He qualified very badly. It was a whole thing. I blame his strategists. He ended up starting in 17th. He fought his way up to 8th. Then, yeah, no, kind of. That was the vibe. Then he got kind of screwed by a, there was a crash and there was a red flag. And basically what happened was he pit stopped right before, like he did it under a yellow Mm. flag. And so when a red flag comes out, everybody comes into the pit lane. It's a full stop. You can get out of your car, do whatever. Mm. They have to, like, clean up the track. Um, So basically everybody gets a free pit stop during a red flag because you're just back there. Um, So he lost a couple of places. He was down in 10th place. Uh, And then they restarted the race, and he just got really unlucky and fell back to 14th. So all that work he did, now he's down in 14th. And then he just zoomed his way past so many people Zoom. and finished in fifth place so yeah they're like yeah he moved up 12 places but really he overtook like 20 times yeah because he was at 19 and dang yeah he was jumping back and forth anyway that's my non-halloween or book related update for how my day is going honestly pretty good yeah best believe he's still begooled oh my lord Thank you have you. these written down no it really just came to you and i said wow i was like wait ghoul jewel I mean, it's fine. I got hats off to you, or Thank heads you. off in the case of <laughs> at least at one us. of these. <laughs> Look at us. I know I just read a, a headless horseman one to wrap up the, the Halloween reads because I don't think I can take any more. I think I'm fully done after this. I mean, I've got a few that I'm like, uh, if I had more time, I absolutely yeah. would. There's too many. I'll save them for next year, I suppose. I know, but then more get published, and then it's just like, what that's true but most of my at least my historical ones are older that's true yeah there were i didn't the ones i read were good but i didn't read a lot of historical ones that was where most of mine came in nice well i don't have a halloween segue into into that i I really tried um no yabba dabba do our brains are frighteningly bad right now well that's what made me think of the zombie thing in the first place because my brain she's not functioning anymore has she been eaten she might be a little partially snacked on by maybe like a little nicholas holt did you ever watch warm bodies nope ah well i I was digging through my to see why i should know that name and i don't (laughs) yeah he's do you know him he's the one from the great oh yes okay so i do know the name yeah got it so and it was a book, so that I didn't read the book, but it exists as a book. So there's our well, there you have it. Our uh, bookish segue into <laughs> our Halloween slash paranormal slash monster slash spooky season slash seasonally relevant slash anything else that we have read that kind of fits the creepy vibes of this. That's our longest season. episode title <laughs> ever. <laughs> Yeah, can't wait to squeeze that onto a graphic. We got a lot to cover. I'm not ready for this. Yeah, well, I would say first of all, we're doing this is TBR, so let's try to avoid Mm. spoilers. This is our. Oh, good lord! I believe in us. I think if we start getting into spoilers, we're gonna be here a long time. Yeah, I don't. uh, Personally, I don't feel like talking that much. (laughs) I think we gotta leave it short and sweet. Like and my spooky. man Josh Hutcherson. Oh. Why did you come for him like that? He's short and sweet. I love him. I just saw a tweet about someone. They were like, stop perceiving my man. And I was like, I feel that. I was batting <laughs> so people. hard <laughs> in his army in middle school. <laughs> God, I love him. He's in like a horror movie, like Friday yeah. Fridays or something. So Five, five Nights at Freddy's. Five yes. Nights. I love him. So. I did see... <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was like a tweet or on threads or what from somebody who was like, I like came who, talking about how they came with a friend who like knows all the lore and is oh, like yeah. very into because it's a whole thing. Apparently, I don't know anything about oh, it. Oh, really? Oh, I thought, they were, I thought you were talking whole... about Josh Hutcherson lore. I was like, I know. No, that. no, no. Sorry. No. The Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> oh. lore. There's a lot uh. of lore and like references to things that real fans like I get my sister went to see it. So I assume she knew what was going on would like <gasps> they'd react really big. And then that person was just there to see Josh Hutcherson. Like she agreed to come with her friend and was like. <laughs> I'm just here for Josh Hutcherson. And I was like, if I, because I refuse to go 
My sister wanted me to, and I was like, I don't do yeah. scary. Even if no. it's just like kind of a little bit, I don't do I don't do scary. No. I scream. I just I don't like it. And nothing mm-hmm. about the trailer to that movie made me want to go see it, with the one exception being Josh, Josh. Hutcherson. Did yeah. you ever watch that show he was in? Uh yeah, it was that time travel one. Yeah, I, I, I watched, like, watched the first, the first season. season, I think. And it was just like not. I thought it was funny. Kind of, yeah. There was that like dick out scene, which obviously wasn't his real. P- yeah. it was fake, but like it was still shocking. <laughs> it was shocking and alarming. Speaking of shocking and alarming, um, I actually can't use that as my segue because I've only read. We're going to go in. Uh, we've divided our books into sort of subcategories here. Yeah. So um, I can do it starting with easier. Yes. Yeah, so, so we're starting with full theme. length books. Yes. We'll get to novellas later. Um, I only read one contemporary, like, sort of Halloween-y novel, and it was not shocking and disturbing, so I can't start there. Sorry. Aww. Do you have Um, any shocking and disturbing contemporary Halloween? I'm, like, looking. I think I did only just read one as well. Um, Like, full length. It was I'll Come Back for You by Cherish Reed, and I have a crazy obsession with Cherish Reed, so I won't stop until I've read all of her books. Um, So that one was, like, her first paranormal one. Um, like a pretty basic, I'd say paranormal. Um, I think she and her sisters own like a bed and breakfast or something of the sort. And then he is on like a paranormal like ghost show where it's like kind of like considered to be kind of just like, you know, junky and not real ghosts. And then they show up to this B&B and uh oh, real ghosts. (gasps) And they all get scared. (laughs) And it was like, a very cozy, but also a little bit creepy, paranormal, like, a nice segue into the season if you're not, like, looking for anything, like, too, like, horror, gory, stuff like that. Um, it's, like, a nice little mystery of, like, who was haunting them and stuff. Um, so I enjoyed that. It was a good audio. Tell me why too. I was digging through my list because I was like, I swear I read one with a similar premise. No, it's just because I watched Casper the Friendly Ghost this month. Honestly contemporary more sexy casper the friendly ghost what a recommendation that is <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it it, it gave like vibes i can't really remember like what the vibes were but they were good. so let's just <laughs> it say gave <laughs> vibes <laughs> i'm going to go i don't know what you. they were but they were vibes i have to preface this by saying i'm thoroughly unprepared so like <laughs> that tracks with my brain me trying to talk about a book that i didn't like <laughs> It gave vibes. <laughs> oh, what I – okay. Well, of course, Goodreads isn't working. Um, But I said in my actual review, definite Ghostbusters vibes, but also there was a little bit in the narrator that gave me, like, what's new Scooby-Doo vibes. Like, kind of like the delivery of it. And what's new Scooby-Doo has, like, a – I don't know. The way the mysteries are solved and kind of, like, the way things are, like, revealed, it gave me that. The narrator really did. Um. So Ghostbusters, what's new Scooby Doo? A little bit of Casper. What can go wrong? Nothing. It was really good. So there you have it. That's what I've got. I don't think I have any more like adult. I feel like I did, but no. Well, look at that. Hmm. Well, I read. Um. Oh, here's my standard disclaimer that we have to go hmm. back to doing. Um. Yes. Now that I have actually started my new job, yay. Um. I work Woo-hoo. for forever. They published the book that I'm about to talk about, uh, but I'm not being paid to talk about it. Uh, all of these opinions are my own. There's mm-hmm. your little disclaimer. Um, my one is uh, Kiss and Spell by Celestine yes. Martin, uh, which I, I read Witchful Thinking back when it came out. So, like, take this as a two for one rec because they're uh, connected standalones. Um mm-hmm. The premise of these two is a little New Jersey town, uh, like, on the shore, where it's just, like, very magical. A lot of magical creatures live there, but it's just, like, a contemporary town that's also magical. Um, It's very cozy, incidental magic. Like, we're just here being magical and living our lives. Um, So the first one, I don't remember a ton about the premise because it was so long ago that I read it, but it was a witch and a merman. Slay. I was always so intrigued by that. Slay. The merman, yeah. That's all I have to say about that. There's a part with his tail. It's a whole thing. Um, This one, Kiss and Spell, I think I actually did, like, perhaps even more. Um, 
it follows there's a, a cut they make wishes at the beginning of this these these witches that are like cousins um they make wishes and so ursula is the main character in this one and she was kind of like her story started happening in the last book things were going wrong for her she was planning this wedding it it did not go through is a whole thing so now she's like kind of in this bad ish spot like broken up with her ex fiance feels weird about her magic is trying to get back to that comfortable place with her magic and also isn't really talking to her family because she feels bad about the things she did with them whatever um and meanwhile a fey prince shows up in town and he's been cursed and in order to uh, return home he has to have a perfect kiss man and I don't know. I get they hit it off. Prince. I know. Where are the Fae princes just like really? Anyway, she she like doesn't want to date him, but she does agree to help him find his perfect kiss and like set up his magical dating profile and such. Mm-hmm. And it was just a silly, goofy, magical time. Man. So there you have it. Also, Celestine Martin commented on our Forever 1989 post and um, <sighs> said that she was using which one? One of the vault tracks as inspiration. And it's critical that I find out right now what she said. Because Wait. Because I was like, gasp. Like not for this. Vault not for this. Okay. She says slut <laughs> is inspiring her next book pitch. Oh, my God. I was like, how did she know? No, no. She's in her own That would be. Era. Yeah, no. She's using slut for whatever her next book pitch is, she says. Oh, so. hell yeah. I'm there you have both it. desperately awaiting and desperately terrified of our, of our 1989 episode. I yes. have so many things to read, um, but that's amazing. I cannot wait because I love that song. Um, I forgot that I had two contemporary-ish paranormal ones uh, that I definitely read. The first was uh, This Spells Disaster by – oh, my gosh, it's so tiny – Tori Ann Martin. Um, not my favorite contemporary witchy book, but I – did enjoy the vibes it was like a cozy small town sapphic romance which i really enjoyed um kind of opposites attract both of them are witches but they're two different types of witches one is like a competitive like in kind of like the witchy like i don't know competition games situation and then the other one is more like low-key and does kind of other kinds of magic and potions and stuff uh she thinks that she one heroine thinks that she like gave a love potion to the other one and doesn't tell the other one for romance reasons and so she tries it's like it's kind of like uh how to lose a guy in 10 days um but not it it was confusing because like she was trying to be a terrible girlfriend because she felt bad for giving her a love potion but then she was also like but if it was a love potion it would have ended So why is she still like me? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Let's investigate that more. But it took her a long time to investigate it. Uh, So while I wasn't a huge fan of the plot, I really enjoyed the vibes. And I did really love the narrator. I can't remember the narrator's name. But the narrator's a favorite of mine. And I think you had recently-ish, more recently than I, had read the Sarah Hawley one. Uh, the demon's guide to no the witch's guide to fake dating a demon yes um and i thought that was on on my scale of like contemporary witchy ones i enjoyed that one more than others that i have read um and i do i just got the audiobook for book two and he has amnesia he's like a devil with amnesia so that (laughs) i don't know what spells my name more than pining away for a devil with amnesia so i got the physical copy of the second book and Me too. It's like the witch's guide to wooing. No, the demon's guide to wooing a witch. I think. Yep. A guide uh, to but I told a my dad as a bit. I was like, "Here, I feel like you might need to read this." And he was like, "Do you know how much trouble I would get in if your mom saw me reading that?" <laughs> I was like, "That just sounds hilarious to me as a bit." But I guess he didn't want to intentionally cause marital strife. So fair enough. <laughs> I mean, relatable. Um, and then also, I have to just, I gotta, gotta mention my woman, Cressley Cole. Because <laughs> while I feel in my heart that they are historical, they are contemporary, like, <laughs> paranormal, crazy times situations. Uh, I only read No Rest for the Wicked. 
this October because I was being a good noodle and not getting too sidetracked by my uh, second time this year, maybe third time this year, and Morals After Dark reread. Uh, but it gave me what it needed to give in the short amount of time that I was living in that world this month. And again, no better time to read Immortals After Dark than right now. So that is that is my last little plug. Um, but yeah, I think that I need I forgot to that I had those. Um, so then to segue, I guess, into the historical romance. Well, first of all, just to mention the ones that we've already covered in individual episodes, just briefly. Yes. Bewitching uh, mm-hmm. was our most recent episode uh, mm-hmm. by Jill Barnett. Would recommend. Ten um, out of ten. Angelica Frankenstein makes her match. We also did an episode on that one. Yep. Reread it for both of us. What a oh, fun book. So good. Um, and then Gaywick by mm-hmm. Vincent Virga, which is uh, generally accepted as the first gay gothic romance. Um, and we mm-hmm. did an old school episode on that. Um, so to check those out, um, and also read them if you have not already. Mm -hmm. Um, the first series, I guess it's just like really two books that I read were by Elizabeth Boyle. They're like not Halloween-y, but they are magical. Um, Mm -hmm. so I will say that like the second one takes place in May and it's not like, it gives kind of creepy vibes and there's definitely like monsters and paranormal things but um it i don't know why i couldn't just like have been a fall read i just think that would have been a very easy thing (laughs) for elizabeth Boyle to do but who's to say uh but the first one was his mistress by morning and then the second one is tempted by the night and it the premise is kind of odd you definitely want to read them in order because i think you'd be kind of confused um basically there's this like enchanted ring um that the heroine of book (laughs) it honestly it's everyone's precious like they're all trying to get at it um lessons to be learned there but there (laughs) is there's an enchanted ring and she inherits it from her like family member and um she makes a wish that she will have the love of her best friend's older brother um and because he's never noticed her she's kind of like she's beautiful but she's poor and that's just not his vibe <laughs> <So>. <laughs> me looking at men yeah <laughs> beautiful but mm, poor that yeah, is not he, my vibe yeah like you at the beginning he is like into this uh like like famous like courtesan she kind of like wishes she like makes the wish after she sees him lusting after the courtesan so boom boom says pop she like wakes up and she is his courtesan like and he's in love with her, but she, like, her entire life has changed. Um, th- her family member is now, like, pimping her out. It- it's a whole thing. Classic. Um, yeah. And then her friend isn't her friend Everyone anymore. Family members pimp me out. <laughs> so it, was, it was an odd, it was an odd, I don't <laughs> quite know why it had to be some things that it was. Um, but then he was, obvi- like, in the other timeline he was like rich and like very stoic and stayed and stuff and then in this timeline he was very lusty and broke <laughs> he was, he was very- <laughs> tag yourself i'm lusty and broke <laughs> it honestly was his tag um tumblr would have loved him um <laughs> he was just uh, that's never what you like to hear no he wasn't great because you were kind of just like you knew that wasn't really him because it was like an alternate timeline but like it it was interesting and then she spends like two quarter or two thirds of the book like in that timeline like falling in love with him but he's like falling in love with her but they're like different people but they're like the same <laughs> kind of weird okay. and then you know things happen after that and then there are like the two magical people who like have like the ring is from this one guy uh Milton it's like his ring and then there's a kind of like a witch or something like Quince and then she loses the ring and that's how uh the heroine gets the ring and then like those two characters are like trying to get it back the entire book and then that goes into book two which is the friend um and then she is in love with I believe it's he's an earl um and he has like a bad reputation 
I don't know why you would make that sound while I was drinking. All I can think of is the Shrek scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give him the chair! <laughs> um, chaos. Chaos has ensued. Um, so this one, you see this this lord in the previous book, and you don't really know what's going on with him. The friend just loves him. She'll love him forever. And then she makes a wish because she finds this ring after her friend gets married and then the ring falls off of her. And she's like, I would love to be invisible so that I could A, wreak havoc upon my enemies and B, find out all of his secrets. <laughs> I mean, relatable. And then like, a subsection that she forgot she added is that he has to find out all of her secrets and then she doesn't really like remember that so they grant the wish she doesn't really know what's magical until the wish happens and then she turns invisible every night from sunset to sunrise and she like follows him around and she's like compelled to because of all the secrets and stuff that they have to find out and then lo and behold he's like a mystical monster slayer hunter guy Iconic. and yeah and it's a completely different vibe than book one. He would not have known that, like, mythical monsters and, like, kind of vampire demon things were coming. But they do. And then it's all about, like, him. It was a, it was very I mean, fun. Do, do they also? What? Do the main characters <laughs> they do they do. also? Okay. They do. In a very good way. Because this man, like, she is invisible. And, like, he can smell her. Because she has, like, apple blossom perfume. It's not, like, scenting, unfortunately. Um, that is a bummer. Yeah, it is, yeah. But he can smell her apple blossom perfume, and then she, like, left a glove. So he, like, eventually finds out who she is. But um, almost all of their scenes, when they're, like, intimate, are when she's invisible. Because it's at night. So he just, like, <laughs> knows. <laughs> he just, like... That's insane. Yeah. It I gotta fun. respect that. <laughs> it was... I'm, like... he. So he's just, like, feeling her up. Like, he, like, you know, knows where things be on the body. And he can get the job done. And then, like, whenever he removes a piece of clothing, it becomes visible. And then whenever she, like, puts a piece on, it becomes invisible. And it was really fun, like, watching him find out who she was. And uh, I enjoyed that one more than book one. Uh, book one has an audiobook. Book two doesn't. But I will say the one dark cloud upon book two, that would have been – it would have been five stars. Um, but the hero has a lovely dog. He has a lovely dog that you see in both book one and for half of book two. And then a fucking monster just kills the dog. And I was like, what do you mean? That's not good, nor okay, nor allowed <laughs> in my mind. Uh, and I was like, well, they have a magic ring. If I had a magic ring and my dog just died, I'd be like, well, give me my dog back. Is that logical? Probably not. It didn't happen. They didn't wish for it. She gave him a puppy. Actually, no, it was, like, the the brother of the dog, and then they had pie. It, like, it was replaced, so it was kind of okay, but it wasn't. So, like, I can't fully condone a book that just, like, brutally unalives a very loyal, cute wolfhound. So, there is that. But I think if you know that, <laughs> you may fare a little bit better than me when I was like, what do you mean? But it was a, it was a solid book, and I enjoyed it. So... There she be. There she be. Mm-hmm. Um, so many to choose from. Let's start with um, a ghost. Captive Bride by Catherine Ash. Uh, uh, I, would I say that this is like a really good book? Perhaps not. Did I have a wild time? Yes. You know what I mean? Where I was like, yeah, I can't I do. like really solidly recommend it, but I can be like, wow. <laughs> that was what a, a time I just had. Mm -hmm. Um it's a uh, they I don't know how to explain their relationship. He has proposed to her many, many times. Um but he has this whole like family past where like his parents were very, like, um, or his dad was very emotional, and mm. so he doesn't want to be, like, over the top of him. He's, like, very staid because his family wasn't, and he thinks that she doesn't want him to be very emotional and over the top. Like, he thinks that that would turn her off, so every time he proposes, he's just, like, very chill about it and very, like, will you do me the honor <laughs> of becoming your wife? And she keeps saying no because she's, like, 
confession. This man is not in love with – she thought he was in love with her sister who's now married, so she thinks he's just proposing to, like, get the next best thing, even though it's been many years and he's continued to, like, come visit her in the country and propose. And also she has a terrible family who, like, her mom is the worst and keeps – they, like, blame her for everything, including her terrible brother who gets them into this situation in the first place because while he's there proposing to her – the husband – sorry, the hero, he's proposing to her again – uh, and she's saying no. But then she gets a letter from her brother who's always causing problems. And he is in Wales. And he's at a haunted castle with this woman that he's very attracted to. And he needs her help. So she has to go. And these two maiden aunts are like, well, you cannot go maiden alone. Aunts. And he's like, don't worry. I'm going to go with you. And she's like, oh, absolutely not. Because she's like, I cannot spend that amount of time. She's in love with him. She mm-hmm. cannot spend this amount of time with this man. Um, but the aunts go with them. The aunts are hilarious. One of them is very grumpy. The other one is uh, a ray of sunshine, and I love them. Anyway, they go to this castle in Wales. No one is there except for this young, virile, very beautiful girl. No. Well, I guess she is also virile. And suppose <laughs> I don't think you ever even meet her grim, or maybe you do talk to her once, but she's got a gram- grandma somewhere, but she's like very sickly and stays in her bed, right? <laughs> so it's basically just her alone in this castle with the brother. I don't even remember why he's there, but she can't leave because there is a ghost who has been haunting this castle for many years. And in order to break his curse, he has to marry a virgin on Halloween. <sighs> And so if you're a virgin, you're the only one who can see him. You have to be a maiden. Only maidens can yeah. see him, but everybody can hear him. Um, but also maidens can't leave the the boundary of the grounds. Our, our heroine tries and she like passes out and gets very sick and gets a fever and they have to bring her back in. It's a whole That's thing. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Um, but then you come to find out that he's trying to marry this girl, but if she goes willingly um, – she'll they'll they'll both be ghosts together forever Uh, and if she goes unwillingly she'll die Uh, (laughs) (laughs) and she doesn't want to and the brother is terrible but he wants to marry her and now the hero is here and they're trying to solve this problem wait so and at one point we get down to one virgin because one of the virgins (laughs) is out and so now we have just the heroine who's bluffing her way out of she's like nah you're not gonna mess with me like wait this is all fake you're just making you're, hold on, hold on. I'm just which she, one is the heroine? Like which is that? Like like not the one. Is the one who keeps getting proposed to, and he keeps. So she's he keeps still the heroine. Yeah. Okay. There's okay. just also this girl at the castle okay. who her brother's really into, but oh. now that oh, girl's okay. no longer a virgin. Um. So now she's the only virgin, and she's like, "No, you're bluffing." And the ghost is like, "If you say so." Ooh. <laughs> and then he's. It, but then the hero, they have sex in a like outpost right before oh. mid- actually it's like as the clock is striking midnight because that's the only way to make sure that he won't forcibly take her as his ghostly bride so the ghost um, was not hot i'm hearing honestly the ghost was kind of hot ah. but there's a girl in the village who's in love with him that's a whole oh. other thing but he fucked with her i like it's so bizarre and also one of the aunts is also a virgin so she's kind of like chilling with him it's a whole thing <laughs> I and that is the best way I can explain it. Like it was just a wild time. Whoa. Yeah. There's a lot. There is a lot to unpack. When was this written? I don't know. Nice. Not super long time ago, I don't think. Oh, it really? Was, it's not like old school. Oh, I thought it was I don't I don't know why I thought so. I just uh I'm trying to make Goodreads work with me here. I know. But do, 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 2012. Dang. It was a silly, goofy time. So there you have it. There you have it. Well, I too have two silly, goofy times that were just the best things that I have read this month. <laughs> and they were both by Teresa Medeiros in the same series. Book one was Breath of Magic, and uh, book two is Touch of Enchantment. And boy, howdy. Were those just so fucking good? Like, so good. Um, they're time travel, which I need more of in my life. The first one, many major, like, plot points happen on Halloween and All Hallows Eve. Um, so definitely, like, perfect for getting into the spirit. Um, so book one, she is a Puritan witch, which you can imagine goes swimmingly for her. 
<laughs> Nothing bad happens to Puritan witches, guys. <laughs> She's fully accepted. She's loved. She has a great family. And none of that's true. Um, <laughs> none of that's true. <laughs> nah, she is uh, hated. Her mom's dead. Her stepfather doesn't really know what to- he's. He's a nice-ish guy, but he gets kind of swept away in the, oh, she's a witch. Um, maybe sink her, see if she sinks and all that. She turned and then the- into a newt. Honestly, she should have. He wasn't terrible, but like he had to let peer pressure get him down. Um, and there was like a terrible uh, villain, like preacher guy back then. Um, and then, so she's in the Puritan times, and the hero is in 1996. I believe he's in Massachusetts. Like, I think he's in Boston. I don't think it's New York, but it definitely could be. Um, and he's got a whole past. He may have murdered someone. He may have gotten away with it. He's rich. He's a billionaire. He is a good old-fashioned billionaire, and he is unhappy with life. So what is he doing? He's searching for something. What's he searching for? Magic. Uh, So he holds, like, this, like, contest, and he's like, if anyone can prove magic exists, I will give you a billion dollars. And it's he's got an ulterior... ulterior Why is he giving Elon Musk? (laughs) Yeah, but he's hot, this guy. Ah. He's, he's, He's really hot. And he's sexually skilled. I don't think I can say the same about Elon Musk. Probably so. not. <laughs> no. Almost definitely not. No. I mean, this guy's kind of like a little bit of an anti-hero. He's not, he's like, definitely, these were pre-2000. So he's definitely got some traits, but again, he was hot. He's a professional. I love conclusion. your complete <laughs> lack of descriptors today. It's giving vibes. He's got some it traits. Was- <laughs> well, like, he's a professional conclusion jumper. Mm. He definitely isn't like the most progressive um he's a little bit morally gray but he's also good in his heart you know it's there and in bed. and he's got a really good friend again these books again were very like written pre 2000s they're not the most politically politically correct there are some problematic things but um i don't know i had the best time she accidentally magics herself all the way into his magic competition she crash la- crash lands her broom on top of his uh, the roof of his like penthouse place and he automatically thinks because like the entire media is there so he thinks that she is scamming him he's like tell me how you did it you are a liar and she's like no like how he held a competition to prove magic was real yeah. and then as soon as someone did he was like so you're a liar you're it lying was very liar confusing. Lies. yeah it was very confusing until you found out why he held the competition you're like oh okay maybe mm. maybe that's why but any any yeah he was confusing he was a confusing <laughs> guy <laughs> um so she now is a puritan witch in 1996 and he thinks she's just doing a whole bit that she's a con artist and he's got some enemies that he thinks she's working with and it all spirals, but it is funny and great and it is just so good. Um, Hello, this is editing Hannah. I forgot to tell you (laughs) that breath of magic has the single most incredible hottest steamiest life-changing soul bending world shifting bathtub scene i've ever read i i i simply and it came like late in the book i simply cannot um move on from it so i i desperately need to tell you about it um that is all so that's all you get of that because you should just read it. That was a lot, but also that was not all of it. Um, <laughs> so things happen there. And then obviously they have an HEA. So then book two is their child. And uh, she is all grown up. And she has like his brains. She is a genius. Uh, but she also has magic like her mother. And she doesn't want to have any magic because she grew up in a crazy household of like her mom doing all this kind of magic stuff and so she wants a very normal life too bad for her that she gets transported back to the two the 1200s and like stumbles upon a knight who has just been like sh- like stabbed sliced 
something. He is not doing too hot, but he is it's hot. Good, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was so hot, actually. Like, <laughs> he was real hot. Uh, so he's a knight, and he actually smells good. Not like most knights probably would have smelled. And <laughs> then they get captured because he's being pursued by a bad guy. And there's a lot of things that happen, but it was so good. And I just think everyone needs to read it. And it, I want a night of my own. He was hot. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I, that one was more, that was, that one was more my jazz, but they were both like five star reads for me. It was like really fun. And yeah, you just, Teresa Medeiros, man, she can just get it. She knows what to do. <laughs> She's got my number. <laughs> I love her so much. They were so weird, but good. Mm. 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 That's all um, I can say. They were so good. I'm continuing on my ghost theme Ooh. Uh, with my Lord Ghost. Ooh. And who's that by? I don't know. Didn't write it down. <laughs> Would have been helpful if I had done that. My Lord goes by June Calvin. Um, this... <laughs> This is a Signet Regency from 1996. Mm. Uh, and it, he, so it, it's kind of like, is there a ghost? Like, that's the vibe. Like, there might be yeah. a ghost, but also, is like it that. just yeah. someone? So basically, you have this, uh, aristocrat. I don't remember what he is Lord Favreau, whatever. He needs to get married, but he's kind of a garbage man. Um, and his yeah. grandparents really would like him to get married. The thing is, there's this um, tradition in this family where the first, uh, I think it's like Ghost Hammerswald or something. The, the, the first Lord uh, is a ghost and he helps the heirs choose an acceptable wife. Mm. Um, it, because he know he the ghost knows how to find women who are like they would make good. I think they're duchesses or something. Um, or countesses. I don't know. They would yeah. make good ladies of the manor. Um, the men in the, uh, the family who have not followed the ghost's directives have married foolishly, and the women have not been good choices, and bad things happen to them. Whereas the men who have followed the ghost's directions have had long, healthy lives and children and such. So they're waiting for the ghost, uh, but they really need... This guy's finally like, okay, I'll get married. So the grandparents are hosting a uh, house party and just invited a bunch of, like, young, blonde, aristocratic women because they know he likes blondes. It's just a house party. Full and everyone knows that this is what's going on. They're like, he's choosing a wife. We're hoping the ghost is going to tell him to choose us. Um, our heroine is here because uh, she's like kind of the poor cousin to mm. a young blonde woman. Is she blonde too? <laughs> no, she's dark headed. Uh, um, but she meets of course. the cousin of Lord Faverell, who mm. is hot and not mm. a drunken wastrel. Mm. Um, and he, but the thing is, he has to marry well because he is, mm. uh, you know, like the uh, relation. He's the cousin, not the yeah. It's always guy who's gonna inherit it. He's also he's like the um whatchamacallit he runs the estate hmm. um so he's and so a... he's very loyal to his cousin ah. so when the ghost starts getting involved and tell it, it it's becoming clear that she's the ghost's choice for lord Favreau. so mm -hmm. he steps aside because oh, it's his I family hate. duty yeah but but she doesn't even want to marry this guy, so she's like, I don't understand. And then he kind of accuses her of, like, manipulating it, like, making up that she keeps seeing the ghost to try to marry this guy. And she's like, but I don't even want to marry him. <laughs> and then it's like, is there, a, is there a ghost? And then all these other ladies are also definitely making up a ghost. And it was a silly, goofy time. So there you go. Because there's another one. There's my lady... Ghost? Yeah, that one has. I didn't read it. It has far worse reviews than this uh, one, so I didn't really mess with that. This one I thought was silly. That's it right. was just shenanigans, ghost shenanigans, ghost shenanigans. I don't think I've ever read a signet, 
So hats off to you. Heads off to you. Nice. Thank you. I think you already made that joke. but I did, I'm gonna, but I'm, yeah. we're going to keep doing it. Yep, yep. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, well, these two aren't – I don't know if I talked about them in the last Halloween episode. Forgive me if I did. Um, but on the ghost uh, front, I read like half of it. <laughs> and that was like two years ago. But, you know, it passed the vibe check. My hold on at the library just ran out. And it was before I had a bunch of different ways like – scribbed and all that to read things so it wasn't meant to be but it was too wicked to kiss by erica ridley which i did read and too sinful to De- too sinful to deny uh, which is book two which uh, i got halfway through um and those are both in her gothic love story series and they're both like pretty long so like it was kind of an endeavor to finish them which is why i got through the first one but that one was like a very good gothic romance like there was a little bit of spooky paranormal stuff. There was a big mansion that was, you know, could have housed murders and murderers. Um, He has been accused of being maybe a murderer. Um, Things in his past, all of that. She is, I think, a poor relation of her, like, cousin. And then the cousin's mother is bleh. And so she ends up going to the manor, or, like, the mansion with them. And obviously he falls in love with her and she's kind of like is he a murderer does that matter to me if he is you know the classic conundrum of yeah we've all been there of too wicked to kiss too sinful to deny um and that one i just really enjoyed because it definitely kind of had like the is there actually paranormal stuff happening is it just like you know, weird things coincidentally happening. I really, I really, I gave it five stars. I really liked it, apparently. Um, so I don't remember a lot of it. His name was Gavin Linecroft, which, rar, hot, um, go him. So that, and her name was Evangeline, like very good gothic names. Um, and then the second one is a, like one of the friends or one of the people at that house party that they're all at in book one, and she can see ghosts. Um, so spoiler alert, paranormal stuff is occurring, um, and things happen and I, again, didn't finish it, but I would definitely recommend them if you're looking for either like a follow-up to Gaywick or something along just like the gothic historical romance vibes. Um, Eric Ridley's a great writer, so I think she really, she really shined there. And I definitely wish there were audiobooks because that's just my biggest inhibitor to those is just not having the time and or patience. I'm so bad at reading books physically. My attention span. Alas. Well, I do have another is there something paranormal happening? But first, I do want to finish my ghost train Mm. um, with... The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller, which I know you didn't like as much. Uh, But I will say, if you, listener, know the differences between our taste and know that you tend to align with my taste, which Mm -hmm. is, like, you like a bit more angst, this was a five-star. I love Everyone loves that book. I saw a pretty mixed – maybe it's just people I'm friends with on Goodreads. Oh, people I'm friends – everyone loved it. Oh. Well, mine I saw were more mixed. Um, Mm. It really worked for me. Um, but I, I like a touch of angst and sadness. Not all the time. It was really sad to me. I think there was a very, I I didn't think most of it was very sad. I think that, and like the resolution and again, no spoilers, but there is, a. it's a, a woman who is very scandalous. Her, um, abusive, uh, husband has died but he basically smeared her in the press all over Europe and now she's back in New York and they all know about it too um, but she has a lot of money and she's here to be like I'm just gonna do what I want and so she's got this she bought this old decrepit house in kind of the New York countryside um, and is going to refurbish it uh, and do a bunch of interior design and document it all in a book that she's gonna publish about like interior design for not super wealthy women um but very quickly she doesn't believe in ghosts but everybody says that it is haunted and uh very quickly the crew that she's hired to work there just Mm -hmm. abandon ship and are like no we will not be coming back unless you can find a way to get rid of the ghosts 
Um, we're pretty sure there's a pack of ghosts living there. It's a whole thing. Meanwhile, silly, goofy Sam, uh, what's his last name? Uh, oh, I'm blanking. More. Uh, yeah. Comes from a family of famous scientists. And he's really into ghosts. And he's like, please let me study your house. He was so hot. But he's like, please let me study your house. Yeah. Please, I just want to talk to the ghost. Um, And she's like, there's no such thing as ghosts. And also, I cannot get involved with you, but I'm very attracted to you. So this is going to be a hard no from me, fam. Um, But then she needs to get rid of a ghost. To quote him, I don't hunt ghosts. I just want to make their acquaintance. That's the vibe. (laughs) He is here to make the acquaintance of the ghost slash pack of ghosts. Um... And it turns out there's some tragedy as you start to, which makes sense. It's a ghost. Um, Mm -hmm. But as you start to get to the bottom of what's going on with the ghost situation. And also she can't be with him, but they're very, or she is not emotionally a place where Mm -hmm. she can be with him due to the, you know, dead abusive husband. There's also some like family drama with the husband's twin. And there's a lot. Yeah. I did devour it though. I loved it so much. I thought it was fantastic. You, you also loved the brightest star in Paris, right? I did. Mm-hmm. I did. That were... one also. That one's not quite as. This one's a little bit more gothic because it's like the yeah. haunted house vibe, whereas that yeah. one is more just like, oh, I'm seeing ghosts. Which also, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you're I seeing see ghosts. Dead people. But that one ties even more into the like, uh, you have to deal with your emotional ghosts yeah. if you want to move forward, and just like those manifesting as actual ghosts. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one was not her ghosts. Mm-hmm. It was someone else's ghosts haunting a yeah. house. Um, so it was a bit more like kind of spooky yeah. gothic vibes. Um, so, uh-huh. yeah, if you like From- a bit of angst, you don't mind a little sad storyline in there. I thought that one was fantastic. From what I remember of those two books, because I gave, I think, both of those three stars. And then the – well, that one actually gave three and a half, but I rounded – down just for good read so like i still in my review i was like looking back at it and i was like i still recommend it um but it just wasn't like up my alley taste wise um but there's a distinct theme of all of her heroes in all three of her books including hotel of secrets which is not related because like the, the first two have like family members who are related and so that's kind of how they jump together and then hotel of secrets i thought was part of it so that's why i read these two before that and it's not. There's no paranormal or anything in that. Um, but all of her heroes are so cinnamon roll, so sexually skilled. <laughs> Sometimes they have to learn it, but then when they learn it, they're good. Uh, the way she writes heroes, I love. I don't really know what recipe she's she's cooked up, but I really enjoy how she writes her heroes. And again, like it wasn't that I didn't like the main character, like the heroines either. It was more so the sad plots of both of them that I just didn't really vibe with um but she's a really good writer and i really want her to write more i don't know where she is in her next book but i want it um well i think i have one that we both read recently which was vampires of el norte oh Uh, i didn't even include that on my list yes mm -hmm. yeah uh again but that was like the 1900s right yeah it's like a little Uh, or it was the – I don't quite remember. Let me see. I mean, it was during, like – I know. I just don't know my history. It was on the Texas-Mexican mm-hmm. border. Um, 1840s. Might be. Okay, yeah. Um, that makes more sense. Yeah. So, it takes place on the Texas, Mex- Texas-Mexico border. Um, it's, like, classified as a supernatural western, which I'd agree with, Um, which was a fun kind of, like – genre blending and she's the daughter of a rancher and she was attacked by these vampires in her childhood and then her best friend the hero thought that she was dead because she was dead um (laughs) i mean he he was reasonably in his defense (laughs) she was dead she was dead uh so he thinks that he's gonna be exiled so he leaves and doesn't come back and she has miraculously survived and is kind of miffed for the rest <laughs> of, like, her past that he left. She's like, why did he leave? No one has told me why he's gone, but he left in my time of need, and I'm mad about it. Um, and then they grow up, fast forward, and she wants to be kind of like a healer 
for the war that's happening and he's coming back as a vaquero uh, a soldier like he's like fighting and they converge and she's angry and he's like you're alive that's news to me and she's like yeah you didn't know that so she kind of like remains a little bit angry and then she kind of is like well i mean he did have a (laughs) kind of a valid reason (laughs) and so you know i was on both of their sides i saw it from both of them she was salty and she was like so how many women have you slept with And he's like well um and then he was like but you were dead and I was trying to heal my broken soul. And so they both made sense. <laughs> and uh, and then there were the vampires. And they were just blood-sucking, eyeless, black creature things that were kind of hairy. And They were giving, uh-huh. like, Slender Man vibes, but if Slender Man yeah. was, like, a creature. I mean, yeah. like, a more animal than mm-hmm. man creature. I love the vampires. Mm-hmm. I wanted – that was my one note with this book was I wanted far yeah. more vampires. It was definitely more along the lines of um, romance, historical romance. Yeah, which I was pleasantly surprised because I wasn't expecting yeah. much in the way of the romance. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be more like gothic horror, yep. like historical yep. fiction. Um, but it was very – it sort of felt like a YA historical romance. Um, it did. With a little bit of horror. And I was like, but but, I, but what if there were more vampires? I I do agree. Did you did the audiobook, right? Mhm. Oh gosh, both narrators were great, but Nestor's oh, he was hot. A man has a heavenly voice. Just saying. It's a really good audiobook. No notes on the audiobook front. It was he was real hot. I was like in a phase of like reading really hot like men narrate me books and it was a high point, I must say. <laughs> it's a high point for me. Uh, yeah, so we both read that. And she's the author, Isabel Cañas is the author, and she was also the author of The Hacienda, which I haven't read, but I've heard good things about. So, there you have it. Uh, yeah, so uh, going back to my Is There Something Paranormal Happening Here book, and I will not tell you the answer on that, um, is... Who is the author? The Lady's Guide to Attempting a Transylvanian Count, wow. which is by, oh, I cannot say her name, Emmanuel de Maupassant. Oh, yeah, I know that. Okay, yeah. Um, She's written some other ones in this series that sound fun, but this one was the only, like, Halloween-y one. Um, so I read this one. Uh... And it, she is, our heroine is making her way into, I think it's like her father just died. Um, and so she, she's the daughter of a diplomat. So she basically has moved around a lot her whole life. And now um, he's died. So she is making her way uh, deep into the heart Downtown. of Transylvania. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. To go to her husband, who she hasn't seen in many years, because he basically just married her and then left her and uh, corresponded I with her father that. some, but not her. Uh, and now she's like, well, guess what? Surprise, I'm your wife and I'm here. I have decided that you cannot ignore me anymore. So I am coming to Transylvania. Uh, and she gets there and the head of the family has just died brutally. There's a lot going right. on. Nobody in the village likes the family. Like, it's a very spooky. It's like him and the, I think it's his older brother that was the head of the family that just died. And then the hero's aunt and his cousin who kind of hates her, but she also might be sleeping with the hero. It's a whole thing. Um, And then like a really, really old guy who's bedridden and you don't really see who's like a, I don't even know, uncle something. He's in there somehow. Um, And then some servants and a lot of family secrets and a very creepy crypt. A bunch of villagers that don't trust them because they're cursed, question mark. And it's very spooky. And there's, like, vampire vibes. But are there actually vampires? What is this curse? Why are you ignoring your wife? That's really all I can tell you. Which I realize isn't much. (laughs) But you really just have to, like, 
it's it's very like gothic spooky trying to figure out what's going on with this weird family in a transylvanian castle i respect it so i like that uh well the last one i have isn't really halloweeny nor that like creepy spooky uh but i do think it gives kind of there's a creepy crypt that's kind of what i wasn't gonna mention it but there's a creepy crypt um it gives a, a little bit of a gothic vibe. There's also just like family secrets and stuff. Uh, it is A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by KJ Charles. I adored this book and then I reread it and the audiobook was even better than book one, which was which was uh, The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen, which we have an episode on. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really – there's not much I can say because things happen and spoilers would happen. Uh, but their relationship is great. It's uh, uh did, 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 what's his what's his name? He has a name, guys. He has a name. I know he has a name. Oh boy, this I don't know if I believe off you. To a great start. Uh, base. Okay, so in book one, you have Joss Doomsday, and then you have Gareth, and they're the couple. And Joss is kind of like the leader of all the Doomsdays on the marsh. And then he has a nephew named Luke. Luke gets into some mischief and he has a terrible father and the father gets in book one and Luke has lots of trauma and emotional and uh, physical scars and all of that. And he was like 13 in that book. This is 10 years later. So Luke is now an adult. Um, He has left the marsh and he is kind of making like a good name for himself um and then there is uh rufus domesty which um he inherits an earldom through some potentially nefarious but like not really nefarious maybe like underhanded on people's sides that aren't his like he doesn't want to be an earl like he has he was a major he didn't really want this life but it was thrust upon him and he's a very good person they're major both very good people. sorry i know that was really related i was hoping hottie. your sentence would end and i didn't have to interrupt but <laughs> always interrupt for major hottie um it was just so heartwarming but then also angering on like his like his family like parts of them were like really angering and i just loved the romance and a little bit of the gothic vibes of the marsh and um, all of that. And kind of just like there was some murder in the past, maybe some potential murder in the present. Who who really knows? I do, but I won't tell you. So I just think everyone should read that book because it was so good. Um, that is actually my last like full book length historical romance. Great. I've got six more. So oh, um, my God. We're just going to see how quickly I Where can do these live in your these. brain? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, number one, Firelight by Kristen Callahan. This is another uh, – it's technically a forever book, although it's uh-huh. not a recent one. Um, it gives me Phantom of the Opera vibes. It's, Ooh, I um, have a Phantom of the Opera one, but like uh, – It's a heroine who – I think it's like Victorian England, I want to say. Um, the heroine uh, can summon fire nice just casually has that ability but it's a secret uh for obvious reasons and her dad kind of blames her for like burning down a factory of his and like think he's she's kind of the reason they're destitute now and it's a whole thing um so when this mysterious man shows up and demands uh, her as payment uh the dad is like you owe me and so she's like uh, okay fine but then he's hot but he the, the thing is that he's wearing a mask he's wearing like a full-on like, like a, a full face, face mask oh, like, like his whole face because supposedly, or so he says, he's, like, horribly disfigured. And so he's, like, very scandalous. He doesn't go out a lot, but society likes to gossip about him. Um, you meet him very early in the book, and it's clear that he's – there's something supernatural about him, but you're not sure what. Um, and it takes most of the book to figure out what exactly is going on. Um he eventually it gets to a point where he actually wears a couple of masks. So for the first chunk of the book, it's his whole face, but then uh, it's actually only half of his face that really needs to be mm. covered. So he'll take the full one off when he's with her, and then it's kind of that phantom vibe of like half of his yeah. face is covered. Um, and he doesn't know that she can summon fire, and um, people are getting murdered, and he's um, a suspect because it's all people that are connected to him in this like secret club that he's maybe a part of. 
I what a wild time. So there's that one. Um, I this one is paranormal sci-fi. It's not Halloween really at all. Mm-hmm. It's just like a shifter romance, and it's Dara Joy and it's Rajar, mm-hmm. and it is <laughs> an alien man. <laughs> uh who so the thing is uh he's he's a familiar and a familiar is this alien race of cat shifters and sexually the thing about skilled. them is they're sexually skilled cat shifter when they're in their man form um <laughs> they're like renowned intergalactically renowned that's what they're known for is their sexual skill um and they love women so much and they just want to please them and it's a whole thing. Anyway, he gets sucked through, like, a time portal situation and ends up in 1811 Regency England um, in his cat form uh, <laughs> and ends up, for some reason, being really attached to this spinster who he goes to live with as a cat and, like, during the nights goes out and takes his man form and pretends to be a Russian prince <laughs> and then, like, woos her because he really wants to bang her. But he doesn't understand that, like... This is not a race where people are just having sex all the time. Like, this is Regency England. And so he's, like, pretending to be in her dreams, but actually waking her up. But she thinks it's a dream. What a wild book that was. A sexually skilled cat shifter pretending to be a Russian prince, but also her pet cat. That's an, I read the first hundred pages of the third one in that series, which Rajar is number two, uh-huh. uh, which was mine to take. Like I was organizing my books, and then I realized that he was a cat shifter and chained up, and she had to take him. And I was like, you know what? We've read uh, a few books like that, you know, Kiss of a Demon King, Prisoner of My Desire, and I was like, I was on that theme. Um, yeah, I only got hundred pages in because it was just like a random thing that I was going to read for like an hour, but it was crazy. He was a sexually skilled cat man chained yeah. up. Yeah. And she was like, I need to come and you need to like take my virginity so bad people can't. And he was like, no. But then he he did agree. <laughs> and then she like freed them. And then they were in the woods. And she was now awakened to the sensual pleasures of mm. cat mm-hmm. alien men. And yeah. And that's as far as I got. But I – that was not a hard DNF. I just – <laughs> do not have time to finish it. It's a soft oh, DNF. It's a soft purring kitty cat DNF oh, because I w- <laughs> I will be reading that because uh, it gave me the vibes that I was looking for. Yeah, I love the nineties. We, we well, if there's one thing we know about Dar Joy, it's that we will have a time. I love her. Um, I that woman. Mm. So that's that one. Um, this one I just actually remembered because it, it was not a recent read. It was from months mm. and months ago. But uh, to, to, the, bleh, bleh, to <laughs> Swoon <laughs> and to Spar uh, oh, by Martha Waters is not really Halloween-y, but the premise of it is that our heroine uh, is the ward of this guy who owns a kind of gothic castle type of situation. Mm. Um, and he, the, the guy that owns the castle, really wants to be rid of her. Uh, meanwhile, it's his, like, I don't remember how they're related, but the hero who you've met in previous books in that series, but it's okay if you haven't read them. Uh, it's, I think it was, like, something that wasn't entailed to him, so it got sold away, but he really wants that property back, or something along those lines, or he's related to the guy that owns it, something. So he's been trying for years to buy this property back, and he can't, but finally the guy shows up and is like, hey, I'll sell you this castle if you marry my ward. Because he just wants to, like, get rid of her. So he does. And he's a very nice guy about it. And he's like, I will not marry you if you are being forced into this. Like, please tell me if you don't want to do it. But whatever. So she goes through with it because she, the uncle, or whoever the guy is, is, like, not a good guy. Um, She would like to not have to deal with him. But she also doesn't yeah. want to deal with a husband. So she goes about haunting her own castle to skip that's how she oh that's why the guy was selling it she haunted it to get rid of him and he was so scared that now he's like here by this castle and marry my ward so now she's gotten rid of him but accidentally gained a husband she didn't want so now she and like the servants have ganged up to haunt the castle to get rid of him so (laughs) excellent vibes all around one thing about martha waters books i will be giggling um and i did giggle i did giggle it was a silly goofy time um speaking of a silly goofy time 
this is another forever book. It's one that hasn't come out yet. It comes out in, I feel like March is the answer, but I'm not positive on that. Nobody quote me. Um, Lady Charlotte Always Gets Her Man by Violet Marsh. Yeah. I saw you say Scooby-Doo and I was That, summoned. yeah. So <laughs> I can't say that the whole thing is the vibes. Yeah. But it's like, because they know who the bad guy is. She's engaged to this guy who's had like two wives die mysteriously and also other people when they oppose him die and he's never Uh proven to be connected to it but she knows like you know he's Mm -hmm. a bad guy and her brother is best friends with his brother and they're very nice guys and the hero is like a scholar doctor who's also really Mm -hmm. buff and he has Mm -hmm. been off collecting specimens and writing papers Mm -hmm. and things but now he's back (laughs) gladly um (laughs) he's back and she is working with this, like, cousin of hers who that side of the family, like, the aunt ran off with a pirate. And now she has these cousins, or, like, a cousin and a friend of the cousin who run this coffee shop in, like, Georgian London, um, where it's, like, a, a a salon. So she, the heroine and her mother run, like, a literary salon. Mm-hmm. It's like that, but it's a coffee shop. And now she's determined that this is how she's going to, when she runs away so she doesn't have to marry this guy, she's opening up like a back secret part of this coffee shop that women can come mm-hmm. be a part of. Mm-hmm. So you have this going on. And also the brother of the evil fiance is trying to prove that he's a bad guy. And so is she. So we're all at first working separately, but eventually working together to prove that this guy is a villain. So it's not like Scooby-Doo in the sense that we're trying to solve a mystery. It's more like we're Uh. trying to solve how to prove that Mm. he's a villain. But there's like, I can't say what because spoilers, but there's a very Scooby-Doo-esque scene. It's giving like, if it weren't for you meddling kids energy. (laughs) Oh, and also the hero's like a vigilante, uh, like fighter secretly i love that like he's running across rooftops parkour me daddy it don't say that ever again it's uh he's like the ghost of saint giles kind of but like in a more organized fashion in a more organized (laughs) i don't know how to explain (laughs) it this was so fun um i think it's it's either closed door or they just never Mm-hmm. fully so like don't go into this expecting like sexy but it's so mm-hmm. silly there's a parrot side character who is so mean <laughs> he's like a one-eyed parrot what and he hell? gets involved in everyone's business no okay i'm going crazy that was a loud sound i don't know what that was oh i don't know there's a one i think he's a one-eyed parrot we're being haunted by ghosts are Ooh. they horny i don't know i prefer it give us a sign <laughs> if you're in the room with us, give us a sign. Haunt me, baby, one more time. Nice. <laughs> anyway, you. there's a parrot and he falls in love with a monkey. The monkey also is a silly, goofy time. The parrot helps the hero on his vigilante escapades. <sighs> there's just a lot happening there. So keep wow. an eye out for that one. And finally, I have two that I can't say much about because I they are in progress reads. I'm about halfway through each mm. of them. Um, one of them is The Vampire Viscount by Karen Harba, Harbo, Harba something. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's another Signet Regency romance from, I want to say like 95, maybe. I think it's from 1995. Um, And this one, he's like a very kind, angsty vampire who doesn't want to be a vampire. He was turned, I think, against his will. Um, And he needs a virgin bride. So far, it's unclear what for, except that he has this spell that he's following that he needs her for um, to try to not be a vampire anymore. And he ends up winning her away and he gambles. Her father gambles her away. But then it turns out he's very nice and she, her father's abusive and she wants to get out of there. She's a governess. Um, and she's like, you know what? You're actually very nice. So this is good with me. And he hates himself because he's a vampire and he smashes mirrors and stuff, but he also is very gentle and flirtatious. So no idea where this is going. Cause again, I'm only halfway through. They just got married, but a vibe nice, to be certain nice. um and the other one is uh be mine tonight by someone Catherine smith which is another vampire historical um our hero drank from what he thought was the holy grail 
many, many, like 600 years ago. But it turns out it was the grail of death or the death grail or something. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, which is, <laughs> get this, uh, God turned Lilith into silver. And that silver was like the pieces of silver that Judas was given for betraying Jesus. And then that silver got turned into this chalice and he drank from it and it turned him and all of his friends into vampires. So now 600 years later, our heroine is on the quest for the grail um, with like a scholar. They're trying to find it because, well, she's the only one who knows why she's so interested in finding everybody. She has cancer and she's dying Mm -hmm. and she doesn't have very long to live. And so she's trying to find the Holy Grail to drink from it and, like, cure her illness and stuff. Um, but the Catholic Church has gotten involved, <laughs> as we are wont to do. Uh, and he's there working with the church. And uh, they're, like, very into each other immediately. But she doesn't know that he's a vampire. So there you go. Wow. I did that it. Was on my, that was on my TBR. I do want to – we talked about them in our last episode, Halloween episode, but – I do want to bring back, please go read After Midnight by Teresa yes. Medeiros and The Vampire Who Loved Me. Agree. Banger. Banger books. So surprised. Not not surprisingly, but to us it was surprisingly because I had never read a Teresa Medeiros before. And it was just so well written and really great. The vibes were immaculate. I may honestly, that may wrap out my, or round out my Halloween reads because I'm in the mood to reread by a hot maybe vampire man but did you have your historical we're done that's all my historical yeah okay well then we've got ya and i know you read i've got a one couple. that i want to read so why don't you start off with that uh yeah i read my dear henry which is a, a jekyll and hyde remix mm-hmm. i want to say that was on my tbr and I am blanking on the author, but it's, uh, so I have also, actually, you could also, I think I probably talked about it in the last Halloween episode, but the other, uh, like, classics remix from that mm. series, I don't know what else you would call it, it's not a se- like, it's a bunch of different authors that have all written remixed classics, um, but I read What Souls Are Made Of last mm. year by, I think that one's Tasha Suri, um, and that one's a Wuthering Heights remix, which also oh. I think is good for the spooky season because oh. it's got that kind of gothic vibe. That one's really great. Um, I really I joke that that's like my canon Wuthering Heights. Um, it's nice. a South Asian remix, which actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you've read Wuthering Heights, you know there's a lot of conversation about uh, yeah, what's his name? Yeah, Heathcliff's like he's dark. He's kind of foreign. He's mm-hmm ostracized and sort of dehumanized a lot um but in this one both kathy and heathcliff are south asian but kathy is white passing and also it, it's kind of a spoiler but also if you're like me this is helpful to know it's an hea like it kind of rewrites the end of the story this one actually too my dear henry also rewrites the end of jekyll and hyde so both of these I are like kind of ya romances like they have happy endings um so it's not a, a retelling it's a remix this one um I do not love Jekyll and Hyde. Um, I think it's an interesting book. I think it's worth reading, especially because it's so short. My Dear Henry slapped. Also, it's good to have read Jekyll and Hyde because this one, there's even more of a difference. Uh, Like, she changes a lot more in this one than the Wuthering Heights one perhaps even did. Mm -hmm. Uh, It ages them down. It's YA, so they're in there... teens like kind of late teens but they are um uh utterson who is the kind of main character i guess in jekyll and hyde um is they're both black they're at medical school um Mm -hmm. and dealing with all of the trauma of trying to be a black man in a medical school in victorian london um and Henry Jekyll's father is, like, a professor there. Uh, but Utterson, Gabriel doesn't actually want to be a doctor. He wants to be a lawyer. Uh, he is boarding in the same boarding house with Henry Jekyll. They become very close very quickly. Rumors are spreading about them. Uh, Gabriel ends up getting kicked out of the university. Also, Henry's father gets accused of some stuff. And then, so you kind of deal with all this stuff in the past. And then you jump to the 
future, which is not super far ahead, but it's kind of, I think it's like a summer later or something. He's back in town and uh, Henry is acting very weird and avoiding him and not acting like he even really knows him, let alone the fact that they were like kind of in love um, Mm. and like hanging out in his father's laboratory a lot. Uh, Gabriel cannot figure out what's going on. And then also there is this very handsome, very charming, very charismatic um, boy with like gray hair. Who has been appearing and getting involved in Gabriel's life. Um, uh, and I love... So the original Jekyll and Hyde, you know that Jekyll brought all of this about because he was trying to separate man's like evil nature from his good nature. Um, and what resulted is Hyde ah. is the manifestation of evil. That wasn't very smart of him. Yeah. Um, This one, I think, did something really fascinating with why Jekyll has these two sides, because it's not good and evil that have been separated. uh, You know it's his father that's doing the experimenting on Mm. him, Um, but his father, without giving too much away, is trying to separate out something else from Henry. Uh Uh-oh. And it was very emotional, but also just... Like, a really fascinating take on that classic would absolutely recommend. I really loved that book. So That was definitely on my TBR, and I do want to read it. Because I don't think I've ever read Jekyll and Hyde. I think... I, it's very short. I would read that one before. Okay. It's there like a, a s- three-hour audiobook or something. Okay, cool. Because I know there was a Scooby-Doo Jekyll and Hyde episode. I did watch <laughs> that. <laughs> Not to brag. Uh, I read one, like, well, I guess there's maybe another one, but it's kind of a spoiler. So I read one, like, fully, like, paranormal, uh, YA, which was Spellbound by F.T. Lukens. And what a good book, might I add. It was, was, might I add, I mean, I have to add it because I'm talking about it, but it was, it was really good. It just really, (laughs) if you've seen School of Rock, uh, Jack Black goes through this whole like monologue about the man and how (laughs) and how like the man is controlling everything and then the man creates mtv and it drags everything down and then rock and roll is like the way to you know defeat the man and you know rocking is is the thing you want to do sure well i kind of equate this book to that because it really got me thinking some type of way about the man i was like man the man needs to go down but in this case the man was the man but then mtv was like a rogue government agency trying to instill its rules upon the masses and make decisions for the whole when it shouldn't be um and uh rock and roll would be casting spells Uh, or rock and roll i guess would be magic and then rocking would be casting spells so you can see my review for that one and it kind of takes you through the whole scene. And so basically what they got to do is give magic to the masses and teach people how to rock and roll, aka cast spells. Um, <laughs> <Most> convoluted extended <laughs> metaphor. Yeah. It works better if you can see it, but I can't, I can't do anything about that. It was just a really good book. It was, these two apprentices for two different magicians one was human i mean they're both human i guess but one was like a non-magician who can't cast spells and then the other one was a magician or wizard or whatever their term was for it and the human tries to get around not being able to do spells by creating like this instrument to help with it which is technically illegal because the government um, doesn't want people knowing how to do it who aren't um, magical because the magical, like, humans or non-magical people can pay magical people to, you know, give them spells and all of that. So then if everyone can do it, what is capitalism? Um, and then obviously their two mentors get kidnapped and they have to work together. One of them turns into a cat for a while. It was actually hilarious. It was really fun. And... I was, like, captivated by the cover when I first saw it come out. And so that's honestly why I read this. I was like, I want to read that because of the cover. And it turned out to be really good. The narrators were great. I think I'd heard them both in other YA ones. Um, Yeah, it was fun all around. The man sucks. Magic is awesome. And rock and roll. 
That's all I've got. Well, my other YA, uh, this one I do feel the need to asterisk. Um, it, there is a romantic relationship, but it is not a romance, uh, not even, like, they don't, it's a it's a hopeful ending in the sense that the characters that are alive, the main characters live, uh, but it's not a romantic, like, H-E-A situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just... So you're aware. Uh, but Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia is mm. a neo-noir. Uh, so dark, dealing with, like, corrupt government agencies and all of that good stuff. Um, it's uh, our- The man. Yeah, the man. Um, <laughs> Stick it to the man as the- uh, you got me feeling like I'm the man. All right. Well, that was different. I was going with the School of Rock <laughs> musical, but uh, uh, our main characters are – we're in sort of an alternate, like, sci-fi Mexico City almost, um, and it's a, a vampire who's – she's from, like, a family of – very powerful vampires but the vampires are kind of like gangs um and her whole family has been murdered by this rival gang and so she's on the run um and she meets this kid who's like a homeless kid in the train tunnels um and basically pays him a lot of money to he thinks sleep with her but it turns out it's actually to let her drink his blood um and he is just like a very soft he's like but i really like you and i brought you a gift and she's like you need to leave me alone um but he just kind of keeps showing up and so eventually she's like you know what fine uh you can help me she has a big dog also that's important later um and then you get a lot of like povs from other characters so you have the rival vampire who's he's a different breed of vampire there are lots of different kinds of vampires um and the government's after them also because it's like kind of illegal to be a bit like you'll get killed it's like a disease sort of that has been banned so that's a whole thing and then there are different kinds of vampires and there's this asshole vampire that's after her and then there's also the human that's working with him to try to bring her down and then you have a human police officer who is involved with this other like criminal gang but also is trying to solve these murders and bring the vampires to justice and meanwhile our main vampire is just trying to get out she's trying to get to like brazil maybe i don't remember where she's trying to get out of mexico though for sure uh so there is a lot happening and it's a noir, so there's a lot of, like, violence and darkness and, oh, no, corrupt a- government agencies and bad people and vampires. I didn't really do a great job of pitching that, but as long as you know they don't end up together at the end, um, I, I really enjoy Silvia Moreno-Garcia's writing. Both of her other Mexican Gothic is really, really great. Um, like, it's probably my favorite thing of hers that I have read, so I would recommend that as a gothic that one does have a hopeful like romantic relationship that makes it through to the end um and also, also it's just fantastic um and then velvet was the night is a i think that one's also noir it's not neo noir it's like a true noir i think it's set in like 50s mexico city um so i recommend all of those hell yeah i forgot that i had read this one like earlier in the year but it is i guess they are two books by kendall culper a starlet's secret to a sensational afterlife and then murder for the modern girl which i believe i liked uh starlet's what was that uh a starlet's secret to a sensational afterlife better um it was a really good audiobook it was like dual narrated by um the two main characters I'm not remembering too much, but she could see ghosts and he was like super strong. He was like a 1930, 1930s like stunt man. It's like YA. So he's a stunt man child, teen, um, because he just can't die. <laughs> and so like he's great in that regard, but also people kind of realize that this kid should maybe be dead um because of all these things that keep happening to him like getting stabbed by a giant ass wood plank and stuff um and the heroine again like i said can see boat boasts can see ghosts 
things happen. It was a really fun story. I really liked it. I don't read a lot in the 30s, um, but that one, it was really fun. And she was like a Hollywood actress. Like she wanted to um, get into the game and then they have to like fake date for PR reasons. And then there are a lot of other actresses who have went missing and she's being haunted by their ghosts. And it's a mystery to solve who has been killing them. And uh, I really liked it. It was, it was really, it was really good. Again, the audiobook was really good. Um, and then you didn't have any more, right? Yep. Uh, so I then read three like YA thrillers because I also think that kind of gets me in like the spooky vibe. They're all three very different. Uh, the first one, I don't even, the only reason I read it is because I loved the cover. I thought it was like a very well done cover, but it's <laughs> Clown in a Cornfield. Which, two things I don't like. Cornfields and clowns really don't like either of them. They both give me creepy vibes. Um, But wow, was that a violent, bloody, gory book. Oh. It was odd. The reason for the murder? Not valid. I don't think. (laughs) I don't. But was I upset? No. Was I, like, logical? No. But it made it for a compelling book. <laughs> Again, when I got to the end, I was like, they killed them all for that? <laughs> I was kind of like, what? Um, yeah, it's just a clown goes fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, like, what was that, 2016? Yeah, so I think it must have been written in response to that, which the response was just, a clown goes fucking crazy. And was I both scared and intrigued, yes. Someone, d- like, someone got so beheaded by a chainsaw, and it was just not someone I anticipated being beheaded by a chainsaw. So when it happened, I just kind of like stopped. I was like cleaning. I just like stood still, kind of like, honestly, I respect it. But also, I was like, that wasn't in, I didn't see that written in the stars. Um, if you don't like slasher film, I mean, I don't even like slasher films. I don't know why I read this book, but people who like slasher films were in the reviews saying, I really liked this book because it really gave me slasher film vibes. So do with that what you will. But if you want a really gory, gruesome kids against a clown conspiracy thing, it exists. There's a second one that I'm kind of scared to read. Because, like, the author said that none of the beloved characters who survived book one are safe. And I'm kind of like, oh, give them peace. But also, I'm compelled. So I think I may wait until book three comes out because, like, I'm not that compelled to, like, want to hurt that bad right now. Um, So we'll see where that journey takes me. And then I read Suddenly a Murder. Wait, so that one was by, so that's Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesar. And then Suddenly a Murder is by Lauren Munoz. And that one was described as... I'm just trying to see what they said in the copy. Um, uh, One of Us is Lying Meets Knives Out, which Mm -hmm. I kind of agree with. They're at this, like, 1920s-themed party on an island manor, mansion place. Um, They're all rich except for the heroine. Obviously, that's kind of how it always works out. And they all, like, it starts out with someone killing this guy because it's like a locked-in thriller, locked-in-the-room thriller where um, one, like, someone killed a person. And you kind of, like, get some flashbacks and then you see who gets killed and all of that. And then everyone is a a (laughs) suspect. Everyone is a suspect, including the, the main character who is narrating. So it gets a little bit unreliable, which I really enjoyed. Um... And I would say the One of Us is Lying meets Knives Out is like a pretty good comparison. My review is all, it's just linking to the YouTube video of the Not Gonna Lie They Had Us in the first half, because that was me. I didn't see the second half coming. And it was a really good book, really good audio book. Um, and it just, it gave you those like good murder mystery vibes. Um, so I really liked that. And then I read... You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron, I think. Um, oh, and I that one. who wrote My Dear Henry. Oh, really? I think so. Oh, my gosh. Well, 
look at that little kabinky dink. Yep, Kaylin, Bayron. Um, what a book, might I say. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, but I didn't hate the time I was reading it. I was so wrong. I thought things were happening, and I was so, so wrong. Um, like, mega wrong. Owls come into play. Oh. In a way that I was not prepared for. Um, basically, it's set at a summer camp, which was the set of a big, like, murder summer camp movie in the past. And it's kind of like a tradition where every summer they recreate the murders from the movie and people, like, pay to get scared. And then the way that these actors, like, make it seem is that, like, it's gone off the rails and someone actually got murdered. And then the people get really scared and, like, something I would never go to because that just screams bad luck. And you're asking for it. Um, But the main character is the main... She's the final girl. Like, the girl who, like, survives the entire um, murder (laughs) movie and stuff like that. Um, And then people start... Like, her coworkers start disappearing. They're not the smartest uh, characters. They did things. And I was just like, why are you here doing what you're doing? Because... You're not built to be the final girl. You are screaming next to murderers. Um, (laughs) Who then can hear you and know where you are. Uh, It took a wild turn. And again, I still don't know if I like the turn that it turned. But I respect it. And I I can't say much more. I, it, it, it was so odd. But not bad. But just confusing. But in like a creepy way. So... If that, for some reason, compelled you, I, you know, do what you do and go read it. It was a good audiobook. It was really quick. It was, like, six hours, so I read it in, like, three. And it didn't start getting, like, really creepy until, like, halfway through. Um, and I did have to listen to it when it was in the daylight because I'm a wimp. So there is that. I was like, I'm the only one up in my house, and I have to turn this off. <laughs> so... Uh, I think that's my that that's my final YA one. Wow. Oh wait, oh I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm a lying liar who lies. Uh, just I think I probably mentioned it in the last one, but the stalking Jack the Ripper series, I by Carrie Maniscalco. I love it so much. Uh, book two deals with vampires. Great spooky vibes. Um, they're all I mean they all do with like murders and there's a serial killer like wound throughout them obviously the jack the ripper thing um book two really had me uh by the throat when i was reading it for the first time so i do like to read those once a year um because thomas cresswell is my husband uh audrey can fight me she'd probably win but i don't know i'm plucky so there there's that and uh yeah okay on to novellas. <laughs> On what, Chauncey? Oh, all right. We got to pick up the pace here. I know. Uh, contemporary novellas. I actually only have a few. Most of my novellas yes. were under the category monster stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You love to Same. see it. Contemporary, uh, What the Hex by Alexis Daria. Um, yeah. Honestly, not a ton to say about it. It was short and sweet and uh, witchy. It's a family mm-hmm. of witches on i really liked that one uh an island and there's a wedding that's supposed to be happening but the groom is possessed by a demon and everyone's under its spell and she and her old high school rival have to work together because they're the only ones not affected so there you have it there i have it uh and i only have one as well because the other two that i have fall into the monster But it's A Tale of Two Cities by Alexandra Warren. (sighs) Just a very, like, simple um, contemporary romance novella. They're at a Halloween party. I think it's a bachelorette party. So, like, they all, all, a group of friends, like, travel. I think it's to Vegas. And um, it just takes place over the weekend. And she is um, getting with, I don't know if he's the, um, what's the man of honor what's the the best man (laughs) i could not remember that 
<laughs> I really, I really I'm going to blame my horny ghost for <laughs> muddling my brain because I really could not remember that. Uh, the best man. And I, she may, I think she's the maid of honor. Don't quote me on that. But they just have a very cute, sexy weekend together. And she may or may not extend her trip in Vegas to be with him some more. And it was a very, like, realistic approach, I think, to, like, if you meet someone on kind of, like, a holiday like that and, like, what would happen. Um, I really like – and she also has, I think, another kind of, like, really nice relationship with her ex because they have a child together. And I really liked their relationship and, like, seeing how, like, that all worked out and her kid was awesome. Um, So that one was just really cute, like, pretty short. Just if you need, like, a Hello Weekend read but nothing – too crazy or spooky or anything like that that's what all of these ones that i have well all mm-hmm. three of these ones all are i think all three of them are also black romances um that one was as well mm-hmm. yeah uh but same vibes boot up yeah that was on my tbr danielle allen is like uh she's home from college for the weekend and her parents aren't there and she goes to it's like an old friend from high school who her birthday slash Halloween party is that weekend, but the night before that, she's having, like, just a small get-together with some friends, and uh, it turns out they're setting her up with a guy, and they hit it off, and there's, like, a slightly paranormal possibly element to it where, like, all the white people are doing a seance, and they're like, Mm -hmm. absolutely not, we are out of here, but then they end up, like, stuck together because of a storm, and it's a whole thing, Um, and it also was just, like, a cute, like, they meet, they kind of spend the whole weekend together, um, and it's erotic, and, you know, same vibes, um, and then also, uh, Trick and Treat are two different ones, Mm -hmm. um, they're, I thought they were gonna be about the same couple, they were not, um, I think the characters are from, or at least in Trick, the characters are from another series by the author shay sanders uh so they're like kind of referenced and i didn't know what was going on but it doesn't really matter um trick is these are both really short trick is a first date like they met in a one of the books uh with like a romance with their like friends or something she was like possibly posing for erotic photo or she was like filming porn i don't know he was like a i don't know i don't know they met at some point in that book and they've agreed to this first date and it's kind of a setup because they're on like a hayride and she hates it so much and he's kind of awkward and then he has like an allergic reaction to some or no she starts itching all over and she's like we have to get out of here i cannot do this and then he also starts itching all over so they go back to her house and they shower together and it's like well while we're here and like <laughs> that that's it that's the conserve water shower with me the date goes better from that point forward <laughs> um so that was trick treat was a um an established relationship they have kids together um but she marriage freaks her out so she has Mm. never been interested in committing and then she's kind of crazy like she's really out there will is down for anything loves to go party um and is kind of kinky like likes to try Mm. things he is super vanilla and super predictable and so this halloween weekend he has committed to um doing this for her and so he Ah! surprises her by taking her to this like sex club where there's this woman who works there who like guides them through this erotic experience and that's it that's the whole thing (laughs) i love that for them yeah so those were my contemporary novellas and they're all they're short contemporary like nothing crazy just kind of a little romantic time Erotic nice. time, I should say. And romantic. You do say. I do say. Cool. Well, then to take us to the historical um, Halloween-ish. These are both kind of like on the cusp. The first one I'm just going to mention because you mentioned uh, the Phantom of the Opera vibes. And this one is by our beloved author, Kate Bateman. And I just want to yeah. say she can write the shit out of a novella. And this one was The Phantom of Drury Lane. And again, he, he wasn't a phantom. He he wasn't, but he was hot, and he was kind of. It was kind of like, who is this man? I mean, strictly in, speaking, the actual phantom of the opera also wasn't a phantom. 
<laughs> That's so true. He whispers to disfigured man. Yeah, this wasn't the hero, but uh, it was great. And it's it follows because it's characters in the um, series that we've talked about are a daring pursuit, a wicked game, a ruthless match. Um, it's characters like in their family line. And if you've read that series, you'll know that Kate Bateman's whole thing is just writing heroes who have been in love with the heroines for their entire lives. But like, they don't know how to express it because they were too young to really do anything with that knowledge. So then they just kind of like become enemies in quotations um, and like try to annoy the heroines because that's all that they can do with these emotions. And then they come to a point in their life where they're like, oh man, I really love her, but we've been quasi enemies for so long that she's not going to believe me. So I have to like set up all these different elaborate schemes that are tailor made to her exact tastes to make her believe that I could actually in this life, love her. And everyone else knows that we love each other, um, except for her. And she hasn't accepted that she loves me yet. So I just have to kind of like make her get used to the idea that we could be in love um, because she is my son and I revolve around her and I am a simp for her. Um, And that's all of those books, including this one. (laughs) And Kate, I love you. So (laughs) that's my... That's my love letter to Kate Bateman. It's like literally all of those heroes in that series. <laughs> That's what they all are. So, uh, yeah. Winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I read a few other books in that series, too. And I enjoyed them. It was The Devil of Drury Lane and then The Scoundrel of Drury Lane. Um, the Scoundrel one, that was an audiobook and that was five stars. It was really good. Um, but not really spooky or anything. But I thought they kind of gave the fallish vibes. Uh, I only read one. Uh, it was Lord S- <laughs> Sawin's Night. Uh, <laughs> I can't say it. Lord Saw 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 uh, <laughs> so- Lord Sawin's Night. Uh, Lord I- Lord Sawin's Night by Joe Beverly. Um, I didn't love it, but it's so short that it's kind of like you know, yeah. If you just want like historical with a little bit of spoo- the thing about so it, 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 the, 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 but the thing is uh, the, the thing is uh, so uh, so you have um, two brothers and this woman who I can't remember why exactly but she was like raised with them one of those situations they've all been very close but like siblings yeah. um, and recently. One of the brothers has proposed to her, and she's been, like, mm, thinking about it, kind of. And then the other brother comes home and proposes to her. And she's oh. like, ooh, your brother the summer proposed I to turned. me. Spooky. <laughs> yeah. The summer I turned spooky, indeed. <laughs> um, the Samhain's night I turned spooky. <laughs> because, uh... Uh, but the the first brother that proposed to her, like there, he had a thing going on with somebody else. Mm. Um, and then typical man. And then she doesn't really know it. She's more interested in the brother that proposes second, because the first one she really sees as a brother. Mm. But there's like some conflict where like she doesn't know how serious he is about it, and like yeah. she thinks maybe he was just trying to make sure she was taken care of, and if the other brother marries her, like he doesn't have to worry. So she's not sure if he's serious, and it's a whole thing. Um, and they have this. Uh, they're they're sitting there telling ghost stories by the fire on Halloween, and uh, the the stories are getting really pointed. They're getting really like one brother is supposed to marry a woman and then he gets locked in a cellar type of ghost stories. Um, and for some reason they do this thing where you can do a spell on Halloween where like you throw a, I think it's like a chestnut or something like that. You throw it, you like write your potential lover's like initials on it or something like that. And then you throw it in the fire and then depending on how it, burns it it'll reveal mm. like their true you know if they'll be faithful or if they're whatever so they all do this to see right because they're all fighting about this uh and one of them like explodes and it's the brother that she's kind of more interested in but he just kind of gives up very easily so she's like oh he must not be that serious about it so the next day she agrees to marry the other brother um uh. but then 
<laughs> but then chaos ensues and that brother dies um and the other brother is engaged to the woman that that the brother that she got engaged to was in love with that other woman that he was kind of involved with before <laughs> So now they're both engaged to other people, but then her fiancé dies, and now it's Lord Sawin's night again? Oh, it's because Lord Sawin was like, oh, you thought it'd be funny to fuck with me, huh? <laughs> um, so he dies, and he shows up on that night, and Lord Sawin is like, what's up? You're dead, um, and you will be going to hell with me unless you take this night as a ghost to go solve all the problems you caused. <laughs> and so he has this night as a ghost to go make sure that his brother marries her. And that's the plot. He has to go figure out how to do that as a ghost. <laughs> but he's dead. He doesn't, like, come back to life or anything. Spoiler alert, he is a ghost. <laughs> so, like, it was kind of depressing. <laughs> you know, love. <laughs> the wacky things we do for it. I was like, Joe? Joe Beverly? Why? <laughs> Why? But, you know, I read Bad it. Her. She's a witch. She's a witch! <laughs> she uh, can the, only, <laughs> the only other one I have is The Secrets of a Moonlit Night by Elisa Braden. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a fuck at five stars. It was good vibes all around. Uh, she was the governess. Um, she's living next door um to this like big empty mansion that just is now inhabited by a very big very scarred um uh, technically the mysterious uh half-faced man of the rumors um and he comes knocking at her door and she's with since she's a governess she has like the two children and she's been telling them, like, a ghost story of this, like, half-faced man. And then, uh-oh, he knocks on their door and everyone in the house is terrified. And she's also kind of terrified, but also, like, whoa, he's big. Um, and he's, like, keep the kids out of my abbey. It's dangerous. And she's, like, okay. Uh, kids obviously don't listen. They get into some mischief. She goes over to his place. And uh, she has this whole interaction with this woman. And she is, like, talking to her and having a good conversation. And then, because the one kid, like, lost his glasses in this place. So then she has to go find them before the big scary man uh, finds her. But, uh, oh, he's there. And he finds her. And then they get locked in, like, a cellar. And things happen. And she's like, so that lady, can't she unlock the door? He's like, what lady? I don't have anyone working here. They're all too scared because it's haunted. And, uh, or, like, everyone thinks it's haunted. And she's like, well... Uh, I was talking to her and she was fully pregnant. So like you're pretending that like you don't know her, but she's not your mistress and like you want me, but also like you have a pregnant mistress. He's like, what are you talking about? I do not have a pregnant mistress. I would know. And then they're like, oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> Natural conclusion. Um, so then there's a little mystery of why there's this pregnant um, ghost haunting this place. And it gets a little... That brings up some biological <laughs> questions for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, is the is the fetus also a ghost? Can the fetus be born? And if the fetus is dead because the mother is dead, is she still pregnant? Mm-hmm. Questions of which probably weren't answered, but compels you nonetheless, right? True. Yes. So true. Uh, it was just... It was short. It was creepy. It got the job done. I liked them both. It was well written. Um, I didn't expect a lot from it, and what I got was good. So it did what it needed to do. But that was my only other historical one, I think. Mm. On to the monster stuff, folks. On We're to coming them. to the end. Hitting the home straight here. Woo! Uh, Thank the Lord. I feel like several of the. Let me try. Let me start with the ones that I didn't love, and we can finish on a high note. Uh, I read two wow. that I'm going to get confused. One of them is seduced by the Pumpkin King, and the other <laughs> one is just the Pumpkin King. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about them in one fell swoop, because neither of them needs a lot of discussion. Uh, <laughs> seduced by the Pumpkin King was by Melanie Nix. This one... <laughs> just... 
evil <laughs> laughter. I just remember this gremlin. Why laughter. doesn't Goodreads even have a description? Um, all right. Some things can't be okay. Well, she into words. um the book the novella opens with her taking her boyfriend who's been traveling, but now he doesn't feel good, so he can't see her. She surprises him with soup. But mm, the door is open. Oh no, he's fucking another woman. Ah. So she's leaving. She's mad. It's also Halloween. She leaves. She's driving. She gets lost. She's never seen this, but be- she's confused. This is not the way she came. She's taking back roads. There's like something happened on the highway, I think. Her GPS isn't working. She ends up in a ghost town, but it's not a ghost town. It turns out everyone's just in the church. She's like, perfect let me ask someone for directions she goes in they're having an argument about someone getting sacrificed like one of their children they're like a newcomer she'll get sacrificed everything is off she's like "Mm, mm, i don't love this she runs into the forest she gets chased into the forest and they're like perfect that's where we needed you to go So she, they're all just kind of standing. So she gets stuck in this forest and she's like, you know what? Fine, whatever. Um, she's getting sacrificed to like the pumpkin king or whatever. Um, who has a different name, I think, but that's not the point. The point is <laughs> she's stuck in this forest and she can't come out until morning because her car is back there. And she's like, fine, I'll just stay here in this forest, even though it's cold and uncomfortable. And then there are spooky noises and she almost gets eaten by a werewolf. But she gets saved by this pumpkin headed demon guy who takes her and is like, ah, she's mine. And then carries <laughs> her back through the woods and they escape from all the other creatures of the night into his very cozy cabin. Um, and basically it turns out that he like rules this town and every year on Halloween they have to sacrifice someone to him because he's looking for a mate. He needs a mate. But most of them either get eaten by other things in the forest before he can get to them, classic, or he kills them because they are so scared of him they don't want to be his mate. (laughs) And she's like, fair enough, makes herself a sandwich, goes to have a shower, but she's also like kind of turned on by him. And then they bang it out. Wow. So, I th- I like, spoilers, because I don't know what else you really need to know about that one. Seduced by yeah. the Pumpkin King. That's really all you need. There are some Sandwiches. weird things where, like, his tongue can extend really far, so he gives her cunnilingus while they're both standing up. <sighs> so there's that. Um, and oh, then, smash. on the other hand, if you want a different pumpkin-headed demon king, you have the Pumpkin King by Cara Demone. Demone. I don't know. <laughs> I'm um, assuming Demon, because that just fits. Um, and this one, she is like a scientist of some kind camping out in a natural park. Natural. National park. You know what I mean. Uh, and Naturally. She's wearing this bear onesie, which is important because she follows these lights into the forest because she's like, hello, who is, you're not supposed to be here. And she follows the lights and she ends up in this like Halloween town type of situation with this weird zombie guy who thinks that she's a bear person. And it turns out this is where all the creatures of the night live. And tonight is the night that the pumpkin king is going to choose a bride. And there's this crow and the crow decides who the bride is going to be. And it's all these creatures and it lands on her. And they're like, what? She's a human. You can't marry a hu like, oh no, but then he does anyway. And then they also bang it out. Hmm. So and she thinks this is all a dream, but it turns oh. out she just became the queen of these creatures of the night. And honestly, there's not a lot of reckoning for her. She just kind of is like, well, all right. Well, damn. Damn. Well, this one wasn't a pumpkin king. I did not venture into the pumpkin land uh, this year. But I did read Beauty in Autumn by Ruby Dixon. Um, basically, it's kind of like Hunger Games-esque in the situ- – in the, like, the- basically, every year, all these maidens d- r- spin around this pole and they, like, drop – they're like ribbons one by one and whoever drops the last is like fated to go be sacrificed to this like monster in the woods and it's like a beauty and the beast situation 
confused but about why if you were one of those maidens, you wouldn't just immediately drop your ribbon. You can't. Ch- it's like chosen for you. So like you're like kind of like in trance to keep walking mm. and then it just happened. Yeah. So like shit just goes down and they can't control it. But the heroine would wish to control it because she kind of feels like a uh, an inherent sexual pull towards being fucked by a giant monster in the woods. <laughs> so she, we all? So she's, yeah. So she's kind of like, honestly, like I have a vibe. And the vibe is that I'm going to be chosen and I'm willing. No one else <laughs> was willing in years past. They've all died, but I'm willing. It's the life I want to lead. And so lo and behold, she's fated to go into this forest. She's so ready. Um, and when she meets him, he's so surprised that she's willing and raring to go, uh, hot and ready, if you will, for him. And then they just, ha- like, they mate, and then, it ha- like, things happen, and it's a happily ever after. <laughs> it was very short, but it wasn't bad. It was not bad. I respect her energy of just being like, that sounds fun. This life here kind of sucks and is boring, so why don't I get sacrificed to this giant creature that no one's seen but everyone knows is murderous i like the vibes of like i bet he would be good to fuck yeah you don't know what he really, is because she'd been having dreams i think of like being chased by this giant monster and then being pleasured <laughs> and it, they all come to fruition uh it's like a series so i think they have one for each different season so meet me back wow. here for our our winter holiday episode and i'll tell you what happens to that one <laughs> so oh maybe yep. a midnight um <laughs> wow uh-huh wow uh-huh. um most of these we have both read um sweet vengeance uh ah, more yeah. your taste than mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah where I'm like, oh, hell yeah, the Widow of Rose House. Give me a depressing ghost story. You're like, hell yeah, give me demon murder and murder. Um, okay, first, he's a virgin demon. <laughs> like, ah, uh, I told you. My name is spelled virgin demon lover. <laughs> Second, it's all about revenge, baby. <laughs> yeah. And she gets it. Yeah. Yeah, it so, was like a little I said, hardcore. But- I get why. This is a pretty popular one. Most yeah. people I've seen have loved it, and I respect that. It's if not you want to rock me hardcore, personally. you gotta be hardcore. All right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he was a demon. He was. He was a cute little cinnamon roll demon who could also murder someone with a snap of his fingers if he needed to. Yeah. Yeah, I vibed with it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Uh, I guess I can go with the last one I think that we both haven't read. And then I just have the two more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> did you, Corny by Sabrina Cross, did you read this no. one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although tomorrow, uh, well, when this episode comes out, it will already be Halloween. But October 30th is National Candy Corn Day. It's a holiday that you I knew that I didn't. honor every year. Um. <laughs> I'm so serious. You can look back at Forever's uh, Instagram feed from October 30th of last year, and you'll see a post that had my name stamped all over it. <laughs> to the point where, like, my bo- – not Estelle, but, like, the editor yeah. is in the comments. And I don't know that she even knew – I don't know how she knew that I'm Katie Corn's number one defender, but somehow she did because you can see her in the comments being like, did Caroline make this post? And I did. Well, I don't want to say – that like this book is you because I think that'd be a very, very weird thing for me to claim. But hear me out. It's not as weird as you'd think. It was actually very good. And I say that because one of them is a candy corn. A crocheted okay. candy corn. Okay. But the premise makes so much sense. So <laughs> they're a group <laughs> Yes, one of them is a crocheted candy corn. But <laughs> It makes so much sense. It's so logical. (laughs) It actually is. So we find out that there is this friend group and they make the illogical decision of like, 
I assume when people want to play with a Ouija board, which I never have, I will never do that. But they want to summon a demon for some quirky reason. And she's crocheting a, like, explicit candy corn because she sells them because she makes, like, fun, like, kitschy, like, crocheted things. Sure. And so so she's crocheting this candy corn with, like, huge boobs and a huge ass <laughs> in, in, like, a string bikini. But it's also, like, a candy corn, which I've, like, seen. <laughs> I've, like, seen a crocheted candy corn. And I don't know where I've seen it, but I've, like, seen this. With rock and knockers? Yeah. An awful lot of junk. I don't drunk. Yeah, I don't know where I've seen it, but I've seen it. I think it exists. Anyway, uh, so she's crocheting this candy corn, and they just assume that their spell didn't work. You know, as normal people probably would assume, like, mm-hmm. oh, well, that didn't work. What they don't realize is that they've now entered a deal with uh, the devil, which uh, means that they each will have their own demon. Um, and the demon basically has to help them find their, like, true love mate situation, uh, within a year. And if they don't, um, then their soul is forever, like, Satan's. And so, like, the demons aren't really, like, bad, but, like, they're really horny. And so, like, (laughs) this candy corn is now inhabited by this really hot demoness. Mm -hmm. But she's a candy corn. And so, like... With a rockin' bod. With a rockin' bod. And the candy corn does have sexual skills. <laughs> um, but she dreams... She When she's dreaming, it's, like, this really hot demoness that she's rockin' with. <laughs> and she's like, whoa, I could get behind this. And then she wakes up, and it's the candy corn that she's rockin' with. And honestly, I was like, you know what? Let her be jeweled in that tiny little candy corn potty. Like, she's hot. She can do what she wants. I don't care. And it worked. Because then, like, she was, like, being set up on dates. But she was pining for this demoness who was currently in the shape of a candy corn. And then things (laughs) happen. And it works out. And I had a really good time. I will be reading the series. The next one is being crocheted into, like, this, like, octopus thing. So... Yahoo with some tentacles. I don't know what her demon's gonna be, but I sure am excited. So, like the entire series is all the friends one by one having yeah. to find their their true loves and or have their souls sold to Satan. And it was remarkably good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the writing. It was funny. It was campy. It was candy corny. So, you know, wow. things could be worse than a sapphic candy corn romance. Wow. So, yeah. Wow, indeed. I was, honestly, I was like, wow. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I have no segue. I read, uh, <laughs> uh, not strictly Halloween, but paranormal monster shifter type situation so i'm counting it um the hellmouth guardian's lover by Whoa. adriana herrera Ooh, which is there was a lot of plot i don't really know there was like a hostage situation and like evil organizations that they used to work so like uh, there were hell mouths that could open up and like monsters and things could come out of them. And so you would have hell mouth guardians that would be chosen and taught they can like open and close portals. Um, and that's the heroine. Um, mm. And they would be paired with these, I can't remember, I think they were like sentinels or something like that, um, that would guard them and like fight with them and be like the, you know, they were like partners. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the hero. Um, but he, the thing is, he's also a demon, um, because of a whole, not really fully explained backstory where, like, his dad fucked somebody over, and so they cursed him and his brothers to be, um, snake demons, so he shifts into, like, a snake demon form when his emotions are high. I'm a snake. I'm a sneaky snake. Um, but, like, a sexy one because his venom is, like, an aphrodisiac. So, like, when he spits his venom on her parts, 
it like really <laughs> heightens <laughs> it like dra- it dramatically <laughs> heightens her pleasure. Her bars. It, yeah, well, uh, any all of them. And also he can like unhinge his jaw, whatever. The point is wow. um he's a demon, but the the organization hates demons, so he's like like a special one but they're still not good they really feel like the jedi council in the prequel movies oh you know what i mean okay. like that's the vibe yeah. where they think they're the good guys but actually they're kind of the they're bad the guys. man yes once again we are facing the man anyway <laughs> it's like a second chance because they were working together and then they got involved which it was a secret because they weren't supposed to um and then something went wrong and then he left her like she he he knew like you know there's things where like he was doing what was best to keep her alive mm-hmm. but she doesn't mm-hmm. know that she just feels betrayed so she doesn't work for the organization anymore but he does he has another hellmouth guardian that he works with but now that one's been kidnapped and he needs her help and she meanwhile is running the monster s- smash i'm pretty sure is what it's called which is basically like a giant traveling orgy for monster for monsters monster um and she runs it that could be a whole novella of itself. Well, it is. It, it's this one. Um, oh, well. But I mean, he shows helps. up and is like, I need your help. And she's like, I hate you so much. Um, have sex with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they do a lot. But Monster then they also, me. yeah, but then they also go on this mission to like stop someone from opening a portal and sacrificing someone. Naturally. So they like fight a lot of monsters and also have a lot of sex. And also, he's a snake demon. So, there you have it. Cool. Snake demon. Have not encountered. Bucket list. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Do you have any more that we haven't read? No, my last two are both ones that I think we both read. Okay, let's do the Talia Hibbert one first, because then I have, like, one that we haven't read that goes along with the next one that we've both read. Okay. It'll uh, make sense. It'll all become clear. Ominous. <laughs> Mating the Huntress, I absolutely did devour. Yeah. The way that Talia Hibbert has not written more paranormal romance and that I need it immediately. I know. Talia. I know. That's the theme. All these authors just dabbling with paranormal, knocking out of the park, and then never doing it again. I'm like, what? What do you mean you wrote one werewolf, virgin werewolf novella where he just is obsessed with this his mate? Oh, so obsessed. He was so obsessed. The- I love him. Just He was so awkward, too, because he didn't know how to, he like... He was so awkward. What do you mean title him? not available? No, I need to look at my highlights. Kindle! Kindle! I'm feeling betrayed by that right now because, as with any Talia Hibbert book, I highlighted so many things. I love her so much. Show me my highlights. (laughs) Imminent death, her mother would remind her, was no reason to abandon good manners. Also, this, so relatable. He asked for very little. Creatures to devour, excellent Wi-Fi, and a complete lack of human company, to be specific. <laughs> That's so me. <sighs> like, I just, <laughs> the way Talia Hibbert writes, like, just even this sentence, like, the love of Luke Anthony's life cleared her throat and said, good morning, sir, what can I get you? Yeah, and that's iconic. Like, that's just so Talia Hibbert coded. Like, the hero. Well, it's not him. coded, it is, in fact, Talia Hibbert. Well, that's so true. It Encoded, decode. I don't know. Okay. He is such a simp. Once he figured out how to ask a human woman on a date, Luke would mate her and fuck her and live happily ever after as her devoted swain. (laughs) Is really all I ever want in a hero. That's the – it's the – like, number one, once I figure out how to ask a human on on a date, it's over for all you bitches. Like – because he literally Googled how to ask a woman out without making her fear for her life. Yeah. No, he's really doing his best. He said, I know I am a werewolf. I know I do not understand how humans work. However, I love you so much. Would you like to come to my house? God, her humor is just so dry and witty and British. <laughs> I love it. Oh. I he I, I I actually all I have to say about this is just reading out the giant list of I know. Quotes because I know. 
For those of you who haven't read it, it's a werewolf romance. She comes from a family of huntresses. Like, they hunt werewolves. Um, which, it, But to, to their knowledge, because they're missing some knowledge now, to their knowledge, werewolves are, like, mindless killers. Like, they're, they're just animals, yeah. essentially. Um, but he knows that this one who she's not allowed to hunt because of a prophecy but she comes from a family of huntresses she's a barista and for reasons that are explained in the prologue um he knows that she's his mate but he's like a human in his human form he's i mean he hasn't hung out with humans so he's like awkward Mm -hmm. but he's not like a mindless monster that eats people indiscriminately so like hmm the math isn't mathing, and also he's <laughs> obsessed with her, and he just wants to, like, as we said, hold, hold her and fuck her and live happily ever after as her devoted swain. And she tries to kill him, and it turns him on. And that's Does really she? all you need to know, honestly. <laughs> she wasn't sweet or gentle or biddable. She was a bloodthirsty fucking murderer. His heart sang. I also <laughs> highlighted that one. <laughs> yep. Yep. One fake date arranged with the intention of murder. A single short but excellent makeout session and a rather passionate fight to the death did not a relationship make. (laughs) And then also she'll write, like, really beautiful emotional things about, like, you don't need my darkness. I know that, but I'll give it to you anyway. I'll give you everything I have. And you're like, why did you have to do that to me? My favorite moment of those themes was uh, since she was – like her family like owns the like bakery coffee shop thing and she's like a baker and he was trying to impress her and like make her feel better so he was like making her like cupcakes or like a cake and he was like apparently his mate wanted minimum lumps in the in this batter therefore he would eliminate all lumps <laughs> no, it's just like i love him i love him so, so much also he's the virgin <laughs> he is he's a virgin he really werewolf is. That's he's it. a that, virgin. That's he's it. a that's, virgin werewolf. That's all I got. Like, if that doesn't get you to read this book immediately, I truly don't know what will. I mean, no notes. Uh, no notes. <laughs> and that brings us to our Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman erotica situations. <laughs> Have you read The Legends of Sleepy Hollow? Many many moons ago moons ago i watched the but movie i don't many remember it. me neither but i feel like i have a pretty good grasp after reading two of the things i did i have to assume <laughs> i'm having a grasp at it i don't know i have way more interest in these than i Someone do was grasping <laughs> something that's so true in uh the first part of hollow by uh cm Nascosta. Multiple people were, were grasping multiple things with multiple appendages That's and true. multiple heads That's so because true. they were headless. It was um it was memorable to say the least. Uh it was, it, yeah, I skimmed that one. I I didn't. I should have. <laughs> I didn't. I started in earnest and then I was like, mm, no I was shame so for the people this works for. This is not for me though. I mean, I I did read it. But it was a yeah. at a high speed. What I didn't realize is that on the cover it says a trick and a treat, mm. and I didn't have that knowledge. So I, like you, was very earnest about starting this, and then I was reading it. I was like, "What is happening?" Like I had seen enough social media stuff that I knew there were two because at first I was confused because oh. I started it and it felt very contemporary and I was like I yeah. swear yeah. I saw something that said it was historical and so yeah. I went back and did some digging and then I realized it's two separate. Mm-hmm. There's a contemporary story and then there's the longer kind of main one which is historical. Um, but yeah, when I started I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, because that one it's like Definitely felt more contemporary. Ichabod is icky with a bod, and he's just icky. And then he like is the headmaster at this like a like academy, and he just gets a lot of blowjobs and sexual favors for favors he does for mothers in like the PTA and stuff. And I'm like icky, and then. He, like, stumbles upon, like, these two, like, headless horsemen in, like, the headless horsemen, like, sport club. I have to go Headless horsemen <laughs> sport club. They play polo. <laughs> polo. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I was thinking, like, rugby. Oh, yes. 
the headless horseman sport club we've all been there Love so which i i found the use of headlessness very compelling i will admit i thought that was fun because like these two men were both headless but they had their heads so they were each sucking simultaneously the other's dick and i thought that was very useful and mm-hmm. time timely you know i think it got the job done mm-hmm. and i honestly i thought that was great i was like well that's hilarious like this one felt just like very like a joke <laughs> like a trick like it tricked me i was a little tricked but i i would have liked the headless um aspect to have been more present in the the longer second one <laughs> because i was just very intrigued by the idea of these headless men just throwing their heads around on other heads and it was a thing and then ichabod gets like he has a humiliation kink and he gets like degraded and like (laughs) and it was a whole thing yeah lots of fluids and things and it and then you have like the katrina von tassel Mm -hmm. like getting fucked also by one of the brahm one of the headless horse men in like a paddock and she was having a good time with it and i was like huh because then she's in the next one. I didn't realize that they were like parallel universes and like mm-hmm. things. So I, it took me a little bit. But so that was the first part. Because there were like two. And then the second one was very good. I was very compelled. Mm-hmm. Um, that one felt more just like Sleepy Hollow, Headless Horseman, Erotica. Yeah. yeah. But like Which also. It was plot. a weird time. but It was. I was com- to be fair, I knew... we picked up Headless Horseman Erotica, so it's not like we, we could did. be surprised by that. We really did. And I, I... Yeah, no. I was surprised I was... by the plot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I knew where it was going to have to go. And I was like, I support it. <laughs> Honestly, no spoilers, mer- but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I was, it was a very, like, morally gray, like, very compelling story. Like, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what a time. What a time that was. Um, And then I also read, I just finished it before we started this. Um, And it's also an arc, so you can't even read it. right. Well, you maybe could because I think it's like free on like Book Funnel or like Book Spread or something. Just in exchange for a review. Um, but it is, uh, Splinter, a diverse Sleepy Hollow retelling by Jasper Hyde. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I will say sometimes I don't need romance and I could just go full, like this thing happened and I'd like support it and like, it would make a very interesting story. Um, which is to say it, this is a romance. So like, I still enjoyed it, but I think that it could have done something differently in like a different way that I was like flabbergasted by, but I was also like, yeah, (laughs) that took guts. Um, But still, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, honestly, it's my canon, Sleepy Hollow now, (laughs) because I really don't plan on reading the original, Um, but I've been able to piece together like the different characters because there's like the Brahm and there's like the Katrina and then there's... Ichabod and because I've seen I saw the movie like a long time ago um with like Christopher Walken as the headless horseman so like I have some of the knowledge in there bumping around my brain um but this one was she was Drusilla is the main character and she's the sister of the Katrina it's in like a contemporary world um so like there's like a prologue which starts in like the 1800s and then you realize that that's like a dream that the heroine has been having. Um, but there was actually like real events and stuff. And then Ichabod is the love interest. It's like a second chance kind of. And um, her sister is uh, mourning the loss of Brom. I'm assuming he probably dies in the original, just based on everything that I've read in these two books. Um, and there's a headless horseman wreaking havoc on this town. People are being murdered and um about halfway through it turns like more paranormal and like witchy in a way i didn't expect which was exciting and then like the end conclusion i thought went pretty metal and i was like i support 
And it ended in a way that for romance fans, I think we'll be very happy about. But there was a little metal part inside of me that was like, raw death. But <laughs> but I still enjoyed I it. And the writing was good. Inside me. Yes. One who wants an H-E-A and one who says, raw death. <laughs> and that's exactly how I felt. I don't, for the record. That was me doing an imitation of you, because I do yes. not really have that raw death. No, but I think if you read it, I think you would understand what I was talking about. Okay. Like, it, it, it makes sense in the context of this. Like, I think it, in the vein of, like, Hollow, like, it kind of, mm. I don't know, would have been interesting to read. But that is to say, I have no interest in reading any other thing that's not a romance, so I don't know. <laughs> I like the security of a romance. Um, but sometimes the raw death in me <laughs> makes itself known. And that's the end. Sure is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we do have some things that we haven't read yet. I'm not going to talk about them, but we can put them in the show notes. There's too many. <laughs> There's too many. Too many things to read. Yes. Don't worry, everyone. We'll be back next year. <laughs> Will we? I, I plan to read the full thousand pages of this Once Upon a Haunted Romance, historical romance anthology. Actually, it's 618 pages. I was being dramatic. Oh. Yeah. That's doable. Yeah. Did I think I was going to finish it this weekend because it just came out yesterday? Maybe. <laughs> Did I? Absolutely not. Uh, so, yeah, I can't talk about that. But I want more Haunted Historical, and they gave it to me. So I appreciate that. Maybe. Yeah, I know. So next year, stay tuned. Hopefully more horny ghosts and hot dukes being haunted by them and vice versa. Or haunted horny duke ghosts. So Wow. Yeah. A collab. <laughs> but sweet Jack Skellington. This was a lot. Yeah, go forth, eat some candy corn, read some Halloween related romances. Mm -hmm. um, and have a spooky day. And a safe Halloween night. And uh, join us on Friday for Moonstruck Madness by Laurie McBain. An old school school episode. Not a clue what it's about. Uh, I'm excited. She, she's a she's a highwayman. You told me this last time That's when I forgot, and really you're telling all me I know again. About it, and I'm but... excited all over again. <laughs> Story of my life. Mm. And get it. they really do mm. love them. Uh, yeah, have a creepy little I don't know day night vibe about you. Have a creepy little vibe about you. <laughs> Go forth and be like a little creepy. If that's your thing. If that's your trait. Do it for us. Do it for you. Do it for the horny ghosts. Happy Halloween. Happy Samhain. <laughs> Happy All Hallows Eve. Goodbye.